It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. What's a mess, bro? Paperwork everywhere. It's Dang. It's a mess. Wow. Why do I hear an echo? Paperwork everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because I have my phone on wow. streaming. I figured I'd shut down on the YouTube side to see if that would help the quality of the picture on my side. And did it work? It looks good. You look real good. So, Alex, concur? It's getting there. I had an echo, too, but that was because I had it open the other window. I was confused. But we look good now. <laughs> it's better All than right. it was a little bit. Maybe it'll fix itself as the night goes on. Who knows? Yeah, we hope so, man. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good evening, everybody. Man, I got a lot of people in the house. A lot. Good crowd tonight. Good crowd. You Huge got that crowd. right, man. Who's man, new in the I... house? I saw a couple new names. Let's I'm just see. Gonna... Fish Let's NFX. See. 5477 Nathan. Adam he says Fan Eric is back. Kovic. Darius. Yeah, that's, that's, that's new. Darius, Darius is not new. Yeah. Who's Hoffa new 31. in the house? Sound off, please. H Hoffa 31. I don't recognize, man. Is that Jimmy Hoffa back? No, I, I didn't know Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa Bass Fish. <laughs> Hoffa's Hoffa? in the house. <laughs> 513 Plumbing. Welcome aboard. No, he. Has been you here know 513 man. plumbing whatever like, dude get out yes here. man at 513 plumbing tell them how we know each other man there you it's go like kyle mast first time thank you kyle welcome kyle right on i'm sure i know everybody <laughs> that's right that's right that's right samatis in the house m jones man send me that Sam detail Nick, bro right. oh sorry. that's right samatis uh <laughs> What's my name? What's my name? What's that song? Never mind. How was everybody's weekend, man? Uh, lovely. Yeah, I fished yeah. a bomb cyclone. So Scooter Lily and Angler's Choice took care of us, man. So Sandy, the owners of, of Angler's Choice, got us a boat on Thursday night. Scooter drives 14 hours straight. Like, that's a seven one-way trip to the, the Spindale location where the boat is located on Friday night through traffic. Scooter does not like driving through traffic. He gets to the, the Angler's Choice. All the other tournament trails have canceled because of 40-mile-an-hour winds. As soon as he signs the paperwork for the loaner boat, a text come through. Canceled Saturday. That's day one. Mm. It's two separate tournaments on Jordan. So we go out. We fish a little bit. Um, one day the story will be told, but let's just say we battled again and uh, came in fifth. It was uh, dark forces perhaps are at work, man. But um, – Let's say we didn't fish a full tournament day, and one day I'll tell the story. One day I'll tell the story. One day. Okay. Yeah, like and uh, both of my keeper fish came on baits, tackle craft, uh, uh, a modified chatter bait that I hand tied the skirt on using a gambler eel as the trailer. If you haven't seen a gambler eight inch eel on the back of a chatter bait, you should. Uh, two, two fish close to 10 pounds. One was 10, three, one was nine and change that were weighed in. I caught a six on my first cast. Um, not my first cast, sorry. The first 10 minutes of a bait that, uh, uh TK painted for me, faded out chartreuse blue DT mm. flat seven from Marapala. Basically it's a tap crank bait. So if you guys know zoom tap, you'll know the shape that I'm talking about. Here's a tap crank bait. If I can get it loose, 
This is the tap style bait made for brush pile fishing. I was fishing in rock comes through great. Does not get snagged much because of the coffin shaped bill. Um, Carolina crankers made that very famous. And then the chatter bait was a saucy baby. I threw that down in Florida and caught some bigs and um, scooter caught a five and I uh, caught a short on an a rig. Anyway, guys. Yeah, man. 14 and change got us mm. uh fifth place, man, for our unbelievable second week of derbies battling dark forces <laughs> not fishing a full tournament day that's all i'll say oh wow so that's my weekend update everybody not shabby what'd it take <sighs> to win that eric a guy's won four in a row up there oh, wow. throwing exclusively an a rig and i think he knows where every rock vein is on the lake he's unbeatable right now four in a row 24 pounds hmm. yep Four in a row, 24. Very cool. Pretty good. Yeah, oh, that's man. uh there's there's another guy that's pretty hot right now on Kerr, and it's a blue back lake, as everybody knows, and he's won. He won like 50k last year. Dang. But I know what he did last summer, and I will not reveal it. Ooh. But let's just say oh. I know Travis, and we should talk. We'll talk, Travis. Okay. But okay. it's not not about blue back lakes and what to do. But let's talk. We'll talk. <laughs> Who do I hear in the background? Uh, I'm just wondering that myself. I know it sounds like another family came in. Let me uh, talk amongst yourselves real quick. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Everybody else have a good weekend out there, man. Oh, snow. Yeah, man. It started to snow in practice down there. The 40 mile an hour winds kicked up on Saturday. We got about an hour or two on the water, uh, picked up like a four real quick in like the first five minutes and Scooter hooked up a big and we were like, it's over, practice over, just checking out the boat. And uh, then the temps dropped. We fished in 25 degree morning weather. So crazy, man. That 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 wind was up and down the coast. Did you fish, yeah. Alex? I did not. We are... At least where I'm at in Indiana, you could. I think you could. I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, you can get out through the boat ramp. You might be dodging some icebergs here and there. It's not <laughs> crazy dangerous or anything. You can get out there. It's uh, today. It was in the 60s. The high was in the 60s, and it's like that all week. So the ice should be completely gone this week, or if not, this weekend. So finally, we can get out there, get the boats in the water, and throw some A-rigs around. So we're definitely right on. way behind where the rest of the country is as usual, but excited to finally get out of the house and get a sunburn. <sighs> That's awesome, man. Can I show you guys something cool? Let's see it. So the first lure of the year that I caught a fish on. I'm back, by the way. This year was this little badass. I did a skunk pattern, and TK Stanley took my skunk and made it better. How hot is that little bait? Ooh. That's a Timber Tiger DC-1 in skunk. And TK takes things I do and just makes them so much better, man. So I thought I'd do a giveaway. I'm going to give away one of these DC-1 Timber Tigers tonight. And anybody that goes and buys any of my stickers on my website, Tug Life is the new one. I don't know if I showed this yet, Travis. I can't remember, dude. You but did. That's, go that's a Goonie Wolf. But and then please show Bass again. Bassapalooza. Dr. Krakenstein's available. Rise and Glide. Bass Lab. Oops. River Rat. Legendary Lakes. So anybody that buys a sticker, you're entered in. And I'm going to randomly generate a winner from all the purchases. And I'll throw in that little bad boy right there. And maybe another Bass Lab surprise. Ooh, very nice. Heck you will love giveaway it right there. I'm, I'm well, gonna say you, I'm gonna say you'll love it. But Travis, wait, there's more. It's like the oh, Ginsu commercial, really nice. man. <laughs> what you got tonight, Travis? Well, I got yelled at. Uh, that was a problem earlier. I had to go deal with. Some you mean stuff. you 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 just got yelled at? She was yelling at you from the house. Oh, that's that's okay. Did you take care of it? Uh, she did. I didn't. Okay. Gotcha. Apparently, oh, I mean, I'd love to hear everybody's opinion in the chat. When you want to cut your fingernails, um, I just do it in the bathroom sink. 
and sometimes yeah. they fly in different directions. And apparently there was quite a few of them scattered across the countertop, and she did not like that. So how do you do it? I bite mine. You I'm bite the same you. way. I bite mine too. I'm pretty bad about it. Anyways, I think we should do a giveaway tonight. I think so. It's a good idea. Two two giveaways. Yes. Double up. Um, I'm just watching the comments. Okay. Bunch of cavemen. You really bite your fingernails? You don't trim them? I mean, I have, but I bite them. Alex? I'm the same way. I'm a biter. If I get nervous or just worked up, I kind of... Like a beaver. So they're not smooth and nice and they're rough no, and scruffy. No, man. Okay. My, are they rough and scruffy, dude? I don't know. I Eric mean, puts Sally good. Hansen on his to keep them. You damn them right, nice man. Strong. Hard as nails, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't, I don't, I don't need, I keep them long enough to put a split ring in and take a treble hook off. I don't, I don't, Dang. I generally don't use the pliers. <laughs> Cut them in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> like sleeping in cactuses. Anyways, we're going to do a monster bass bag giveaway. It's got actually a bunch of cool baits. I threw a buff, a sticker in here. I'm going to throw a couple of these Yamamoto Yama frogs in there as well. And a t-shirt. So we're going to do the super chat. If you guys donate uh super chat, uh, every, every entry is a giveaway. And Alex will randomly pick a winner at the end of the show. Um, very cool. So I think this is a nice little gift package. For sure. Enjoy Monster Bass. That's the Coca-Cola uh, uh, play on, play on, play on. Yes, Come on. yes, yes. Oh, so, what the uh, heck? I'll throw, a, I'll throw a Monster Bass bag into my giveaway hold to on. everybody. You know so <laughs> there you go. What else? You want to make it even better? Here Let's keep go. going. I'm going to go grab some more stuff if that's what we're going to do here. I think it's good. I'll keep going because I got about five Monster Bass bags in mine, man. <laughs> <laughs> Travis got to throw in his boat by the end of this, it sounds like. <laughs> You know what? Screw it. Here we go. Uh, oh, you think you can make yours better? I dare you. Could get costly. You got to throw in something you paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be, you know, like you're giving away free shit. Uh, I want something you actually paid for. I'm going to throw this awesome you, top you, water bait as well. You didn't pay for it. And freebie. this brand new crankbait. Freebie. Do something that hurts. Do something that hurts. Give away something that hurts that you'd actually throw. Because I throw this. <laughs> Come on, man. What you got? I paid for the Yama Frogs, bro. Okay, that's fair then. All right, Travis cool. is giving away Yama Frogs that he paid for and loves. You better like them. I better see you throwing that on the upper bay. I'll call you out. Hmm. That's a heck of a giveaway right there. Hold up that Yama Frog. I, I want to see it because uh, All right. Derek Yamamoto made Bob Cherry... A pack of Yama frogs from because he was Konami baits. And I'm telling you, Alex, listen, it was in the shape, different, different frog, but nonetheless, still a good frog. So he made, listen, Travis, this is very interesting. So he made a zoom horny toad, almost the same exact mold with Yamamoto plastics. And it was so dense and salty that the sound and the way it rode in the water outperformed the zoom horny toad. No, um, the the bull ribbit it was like the bullfrog sorry the ribbit he made a ribbit yeah. with konami which is basically yamamoto plastic with a lot of salt isn't that crazy that and is. the way that it rode in the water because it was so heavy it outperformed the ribbit by a lot it was pretty spectacular <laughs> but it, i think it was the weight of it they were completely different now that makes there it good. you go there you go, Travis. Good job. That's for you, Wave, Kern and Ice. It's in the back. I love it. That's a good giveaway. I don't care what anyone says. Talking that's, a, that's, a, that's a good giveaway. I like it. Good. See how we get a little competitive, man, and things just stepped up for everybody? Yes. That's the yes. spirit of giving. Uh, we got Jake, $5. Um, is the first. The, uh, the first, was that Jake, uh, Jake Harshman? Jake Harshman, yes. Yeah. Hey, Jake, I got your message, man. I was getting ready to stream, so I didn't answer you. Um, If you want to roll some stuff by me, man, do it after the stream. I'm happy to answer. He oh, just, by the he way, just, before he we just get, DM'd me. Before we get crazy, Tell uh, me. I, I do have to make a special announcement, guys. We have a live show this Wednesday, a special bonus live at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be talking with... 
Do I even say it yet? Is it supposed to be a surprise? I don't know. I'm so well, confused. I think you posted it on YouTube and I had the company name. Okay. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Great Lakes Finesse, they have some amazing products. I know Eric got a shipment of product in uh, over the weekend. I did. Have you had time to look at it? I did. I put it in this nice little bag right here. That's all I'll show. Nice. But anyways, we're going to talk about their lineup of baits. We're going to actually have three three guys from that company. One is a – man, what do you say? What, what, what would we call him? A tackle mogul? Dude, he's a – yeah, a mogul. Somebody who had a big company and sold it. Mm-hmm. M. Jones, thanks for the uh, super chat. So he's a really wealthy former tackle mogul. That started up, a, invested in a new company. I think it's going to be exciting. We're going to actually go over that. We're actually going to showcase a brand new bait that I actually helped design. And I cannot wait to get out there and wreck them on this bait. It's very unusual. It's like nothing you've seen. And there's specific reasons why we designed it. There's many different techniques that you can use this for. There's two that really stand out in my mind. But uh, my colors? buddy Dan, colors, we got a bunch of colors as well. We're going to go over that. Yeah, but you mean two two of his two, baits? Two techniques to oh, use this Thank bait. You. Two techniques nice. to use this bait. However, um, Dan with the company also shared a video of him rigging it with a nail weight. And I cannot wait to share that with you because that is sick. And I don't think you've seen that yet, Eric. Um, I do want to send that to me over about to it. you. Yeah, yeah, oh. he, he oh, talked. He talked chat? to me. Interesting. Well, he, okay. Yeah, he 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 called and uh, I responded. Okay. We talked for about an hour. Oh, and um, I'm very excited for you, man. Sounds unique. I very like the cool. whole angle of why he designs and the intent that all of the Great Lakes finesse lures are designed with. I think it will yes. surprise everybody. Um, premium components. He he has definitely got a vision for mm -hmm. the company. So man. there you go. Gratity for East Stack Fishing, Omerta Tackle Company with nine ninety nine. Nice. I mean, what's with the ninety nines? I remember I get, you said that earlier, a couple weeks ago, last time we did one, and I guess like a running joke, a rounding, or no, it's just something YouTube does when you put it in there. I don't know, just how it comes out sometimes. Well, we'll count that nine ninety nine as ten inches. Yeah. I'd say that's close enough. Waves, current nice twenty bucks. Come on, Woo. come on. Woo. Now. So definitely want to tune in Wednesday. We're going to try to get the word <laughs> That's out. That's a great it's a note. <laughs> get your wife a box of chocolates and apologize for the fingernails. Yuck. <laughs> I was in a hurry comment. today. I was in a hurry today. Your man grooming was rushed. Well, <sighs> it was a hopefully long were, day. It was a long Hopefully day. there weren't any hairs from your toes or fingers in there, too. Because that would have been a sight, like fingernails and hair. Okay. Kinda, yeah. That is kind of Come gross. on, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> like man. That. Well, no, you you still shaving that? Shaving what? Your finger, the hair. My knuckles? Fingers. Sure. Yeah. You act like what? What do you? <laughs> what well, grown man doesn't? All right. Listen, let's get it back on track here, guys. So Wednesday is going to be the live, uh, the special live. It's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to go over those uh, different baits and talk about the company. I'm really excited about that. So I really appreciate if you guys could join us on Wednesday. Of course, uh, we're probably going to have some uh, discount codes and some other things available for you while we go through this. Another cool thing we got coming up next week, we have uh, – uh, what do we have? What's the schedule? Come on, Alex. Help me out. Take a look. Come on, man. Mm, have it up. Speed Scott speed. with Spool Speed. Yeah, Spool Speed. That's going to be a good one. That will be. That's going to be a real good one. And the next week run, is VIP. Run down the list. We got the VIP. We got Mike. Mike's going to be joining us talking about springtime, smallmouth and largemouth in highly pressured bodies of water. So that's going to be a great VIP. Yeah, heck yeah, uh, man. Members only. That's March 28th. You guys who are not members can sign up at smallmouthcrush.com. It's $10 a month, or you can buy uh, the whole year for 100 bucks. Then, of course, we got Angler Assets, Jason Gramada, Nico Bates on the 18th of uh, April, 
April 25th, I'm going to do an in-depth dive into the spawn, the art of the spawn. I got some sneaky, sneaky stuff, guys, I'm going nice. to share with you uh, during that program. And then <clears> we got <throat> my buddy Larry coming on May 2nd. I know we're kind of out there, uh, but he's going to be talking all and everything about A-Rigs and how he exclusively, I mean, he claims 90% of all this fishing is year-round, and he catches them is with an A-Rig. I'm, maybe I'm making that up, but he throws I an think, A-Rig. I think you are. But, but I, I, can't I, don't, wait, I, could not, I can't wait to hear I it. Might not I can't be. wait to hear it. No, I, I can't wait be. to hear it. Um, just FYI, I, I, I'm i going to protest the Nico show if I don't get my box. <laughs> <laughs> just let him know. I'm going to officially launch a formal protest. I'm announcing it now. If you guys want to support Bass Lab, he had, I still haven't got my Nico box, man. I cannot come on that show and talk about the baits i bet he's watching tonight since we are going to be talking to nico and so uh he'll get the message i'm sure <laughs> but that's right he's fact, i like nico so much man i bought the leeches on my own so if you're oh, listening geez. scott what can i tell you man I, I couldn't wait for you but uh thanks for thinking about me for a year i really do appreciate the thought because it is at the end of the day it's a thought that counts i know he had good intentions so oh, i man. hope i sure hope he has time I sure do, but uh, if not, I know it'll be a good show, and I'll watch the rerun. Okay. <laughs> While I'm outside your house protesting with one sign, I'll be a single dude protesting outside do? studio. I think it'd be pretty funny. I'll drive up to Conshohocken and paint a sign. Yes. And then walk around. You could open the garage the door. The neighborhood There's that air. would be funny. Yeah, that would actually be that funny. would be funny. Yeah, that I think. Be. No, I won't yes. do that because I'm not wasting five hours of my life to protest okay. the show. Okay. So. Okay. I'll just make a little sign or something and take a picture of it. All right. We got another $10 super chat. We got uh, Anthony. In. Nice. You guys, you're rocking it tonight. Heck yeah, man. Doing great. We're going to try to do wait. more of these giveaways. I got a bunch of I stuff mean, I want to, I want to do. I think it's fun. I think it's entertaining. Um, gosh. Alex, so Alex, I was just thinking I'm adding up all the donations in my mind going, man, it's going to be a nice three way split. You see, what we do after the show guys is we add up all the donations and we do a three ways. I mean, Travis takes the majority, but I mean, the me and Alex split with Slovers. So I'll tell you it's what, about, it's it's about five dollars for me and Alex. I don't know so. if we have any other YouTubers. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, I don't know if we have any other Travis YouTubers watching funny. right now. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we do. Some guys with some some nice large channels uh, drop in, but the uh, the YouTube algorithms and the way things have been going have been pretty terrible as far as what'd you call them? Other YouTubers. No, the what? Yeah. What's terrible? The YouTube. What the what part though is terrible? Algorithms. The, the what? I call it algorithms. Okay, I was just checking. Yes. Okay, got it. They're terrible. Oh, Why? What's what's happening? It's just been on a downward spiral, man. Um, what do you mean? <sighs> what's the what's the spiral like? We just have been making a lot a lot of coin off of uh, Google Ads this last couple. Oh, of months. oh, oh. Yep. What what is? They just don't want to pay. I mean, I'm not sure. Google has habit. They've had a habit of doing. I've been doing digital marketing for a while for business. Right. Yes. And so you have to constantly keep up with them. There's a whole business around it. And if you want to stay fresh, current and top of mind, you got to understand it. And um, the reasons that they change it and perhaps it is for them not to pay as much, but uh, uh, perhaps it's for them to improve the service. I don't know. But um yeah, man, it's frustrating because as a business, like I ran, I started up or we acquired, sorry, we acquired um, when I was running Sage and Health Staff, which was a healthcare staffing company for travel nurses, we acquired an internet job board. So Sage was a startup and we had done our um, our SEO um, on Google. And when we bought nurserecruiter.com, we were like in the top three search results nationwide. That's pretty incredible for a little business competing against nationals. If you mm. Googled travel nurses, Sage and Health Staff would come up. Anyway, they changed it, dude. <laughs> and that was such a monster impact to our business. But we figured it out. We hired a consultant and got right back to the top. So it cost us like, I don't know, two grand. But it was well mm. worth it because we could make way more than two grand on putting one travel nurse to work. So anyway, I guess gotcha. the smart guys will figure it out out there and they'll be back at the top. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what the deal yeah. is, guys. We do have a uh, we do have an awesome show ahead. Uh, Travis Myers will be joining us shortly. He was on the Smallmouth Crush Podcast season one, and we had such great uh, just feedback from that episode. 
And I know I took a lot of notes and I am, am implemented a lot of the things that he talked about. So I really want to get him back because I know we have a lot of questions we want to ask him uh, about the different ways they fishes. And in my opinion, he is a pioneer when it comes to river smallmouth and some of the ways that he targets these fish. But just because we're talking river smallmouth and the places that he fish doesn't mean you can't take these tips that we're going to be talking tonight and apply them to your body water, whether it be largemouth, spotted bass or smallmouth. I think we're going to have some great uh, information uh, when he does join us here shortly. So I'm looking forward to that show. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of great note taking. I got a pile of stuff here to go over as well. Uh, when he jumps on and, uh, and just like that, I see him lurking down there in the bottom. So that's going to be pretty cool. Hopefully he's got good internet. We'll see how that goes. Um, anything else you need want to talk about Eric before we jump into it? No, man, I'm good. Gave the weekend update. Um, Got a couple things cooking. Oh yeah, I do. I I got um, those um, those little everlasting drop shotters that I made. Ooh. I've got uh, Brian's custom tackle um, using all of my material. I think I'll have like eighty uh, at the end of the day. So there'll be a variety of colors, and they're coming out beautiful. So um, nice. Yeah, through Jig Squad, which I stream with Kuda on Thursday nights. Um, I'm I'm working with different you know, jig makers to bring some things uh, that are very river radish. That one happens to be kind of a small mouth deal uh, okay. to light. So people you know, bugged me for a year to do it. Still haven't found anybody to tie in volume, the shaky jig worm, but I'm working on it. But very the river good. rat spinner bait, uh, the tests came out great, man. Uh, they seem to respond really well. So I'll be bringing that out with 9K elite lures, Gary Sheets. So look for that in the future. Yeah, man. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, let's you take sound a quick... excited about that. Perfect. Did you hear, hear what I said? Yes. You got the new jigs. You're excited. The river rats. Jigs, I get no, it. there's there, there's no jig. I'm messing you, with see, you, Eric. See, you didn't listen. Oh, you my God. You just want to move on. You're you're awesome, man. I love it. You All right. Really pay attention. We're going to talk. We're going to take a commercial break and we're going to have a quick discussion here, Eric. Hey guys, smallmouth crush. I got a crazy product I just discovered. So simple. Where was this product years ago? Anytime you're around a dock, you're waiting to take off or you're weighing your fish or just putting the boat on and off the trailer or docking your boat, the dock rod is definitely something you're going to want. It blows my mind. So many years I've had scratches in the gel and the rub rail, just nicks and dings, whether it be a metal dock, a wood dock, it doesn't matter. I hate that. Like, that's the worst part. You get a brand new boat, and within weeks, the rub rail's all scratched up. These dock rods are legit. I'm using them right now. Today's the first time I used it. Like, I just tied them on. I'm like, okay, let me, let's see what the deal is with this. It's unreal. It's unreal. Let's get into it. Okay, here's my brand new boat. I'm trying to keep it as nice looking as possible. And here it is, the dock rod. So I actually came in here to put the boat on the trailer, and I wanted to try these. The dock rod. Look how simple these are. I got two of them, one in the front and one in the back. Look at this. This boat is not, if it's windy, I mean, I'm pushing this as much as I can here. This boat ain't moving. I am not going to scratch the side of this boat ever with this product. Look at this. Do you guys see the value of this? Like, like if you had it tied with ropes, the ropes would be swinging. It'd be rubbing up against this. This thing will not rub. This will not rub. This is this is crazy. Like, let's say there's wind blowing here, right? The boat's just like this is crazy. I've, I've never seen anything like this. This is nuts, you guys. Like, like this is a no-brainer. Like, what the heck? Blows my mind right now. Wow. Look at this thing. Like. I can't even push it up against the dock if I wanted to. So to take it off, I'm just gonna loop it back and pull it out. And there you go. All right, let me show you how to work the dock rod. It's super easy. You're gonna pull up, you got your cleat, you got your cleat on your boat. So I'm gonna put the loop end through the cleat, just like you would a rope. These two hooks go right through the cleat. And then I take one and I'm gonna pull it all the way back and hook it onto the cleat of the boat. And same thing with this one. I'm gonna pull it all the way, hook it under the cleat. Perfect, look at this, simple. Hey, the dock rod's the deal, anglerconcepts.com. You can use my code smallmouthcrush10 to help save you some money. So you can also go to my website, smallmouthcrush.com. There'll be a discount 
page and you'll find all the discounts for all the products that I believe in. But this thing is seriously legit and I wish I knew about these years ago. Well, we know we had a lot of uh, questions about That's the nice, uh, man. Those are oh, nice. Dude. Well, first of all, I, I wish uh, I knew about those a long time ago. Um, oh my gosh. Are you kidding now, me? Now, listen, they're not going to be for every situation. Sometimes your dock is, you know, three feet higher than the boat, right? Sure. That makes but sense. For those course. floating docks, those certain instances, I think it makes sense. I tried like that video I made was uh, a couple days ago down in North Carolina at that lake. I had no idea where I was at, Eric, when he actually <laughs> called me when I was making that video. That's pretty and, funny. Um, oh, really? That's funny. Yeah, that was the lake. And I'm like, all right, you know, my electronics are dialed in. I just want to run the boat and, and make sure everything was working good. And I'm like, dock rods. All right, let's see what these are all about. So, <laughs> so I put on the cleat and I take these clippers and I'm like clipping it onto the cleat. And I'm like, well, this don't work. Like, what is the who cares about this stupid thing? So I get on the phone with the dude. I'm like, how do these things even work, man? Like, walk me through this because this is dumb. And he's like, oh, you got to put it under the cleat and then pull it back. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And it took me a while. He sent me a video. I watched the video. Instantly it clicked. I tried it. And that's when I got excited and pulled the camera out. Um, so that was real expression. That was the first time right that's there. Funny. That's um, awesome. And you know me, I really don't like, I like a clean rub rail, you know. Uh, we oh, try to, dude, I know, man. We I try to keep it clean. That, what was it? You got your nitro, and we're fishing, and like he had us so far off the bank because he didn't want to scratch his trolling motor at all. We couldn't crank where we needed to. <laughs> You're like, I'm not doing it. And I'm like, yeah. Travis, it's going to get, your, your trolling motor is going to get, you were trying that year. You had made a pledge. To get zero scratches on the boat. Yes. And it didn't last long. I'm going to try better this year. In fact, I got some. Uh, I got you some mean real... to not get scratches or to yeah. actually fish the boat like it no, should be? No, to not get scratches. That just and fish sense. hard. And fish hard. So let's say we got to crank this bank and get it a 45 degree angle. And you might. As long as the trolling motor is up high enough and we're going to take that into account. And we're going to go okay. nice and slow. And when you get hung up. Will creep in there if it's no. You mean when you get hung up? You get hung up more than I do, dude. That's because oh I'm throwing God. it where the fish are supposed to live. You're <laughs> you're so conservative. Like I'm throwing into the rock where the fish are actually at, and Travis is like parallel and ten feet out. Okay. I, I don't I don't want to get snagged, Eric. Mm. <laughs> it's a zero scratches. I was like, you can't be serious. And he's like, oh, I'm serious as a heart. So when I first started to like get to know you, I'm like, I've never had this experience with anybody. It's a fishing boat. Let's go fishing. Yes. You were you were it refused. You I was trying to keep things it. clean. That lake was uh yeah. just outside of Asheville, maybe 40 miles south of North Carolina. So wherever that could be. Looked like Kiwi? a decent lake right off Kiwi? the interstate. I'm not sure. Kiwi? <sighs> I'm not sure. I had some questions, of course, guys that may not know. Uh I did uh go to Camus boats. I'm I'm working with uh Thayer's Marine boat Ritchie. Looks good, man. Boat looks really Super good. Super excited. No complaints about the nitro. No complaints about Bowers. No complaints about Doug. Those guys have treated me very well. It was just time for a change. And the boat build video uh, I'm working on right now, it's pretty much the ultimate setup um, as far as electronics and just a big water boat. We, ultimate? we do a lot of, I would think. Ultimate? Can, ultimate? Did I say it wrong? Are you picking on me? Not at all. Okay. I thought you told me something that you wish you had different. Oh, well, we're, or have you changed or have you changed your mind? Well, so the you day can, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. Should I not brought that up? The day I got it rigged, Garmin came out with the new live scope. Right. And so we do have a little bit of things we need to switch up to make well, it that's, right. But you can't say ultimate if you're going to switch one thing okay. just to keep it real. Okay, Eric. Listen, let's bring our next guest on. It's time for, uh, <sighs> Hold on. Let's the bring scent, back the Alex, scent you, you of right the woman. There? I'm doing good. Yeah. Counting up all the super chat donations. And I'm excited to hear from Travis. Um, 
we saw his email earlier and I saw the companies that fell under the umbrella at his company. And I'm excited to hear what he has to say and definitely talk fishing with him as well. Heck yeah. Well, let's bring Travis on. Hey there. How are you doing? Can you hear us? Been a while. Yeah, we're we're good to go, guys. I think I got my internet uh, squared away from August. So uh, yes. thanks for having me. Man, you uh, you caused quite a stir uh, since that podcast. A lot of great information, and uh, as far as just the overall, I guess feedback that we got, the comments they they keep rolling into this day. Bring Travis back. I can't believe Travis. And we had this plan for quite a while, trying to get you on the schedule. So, uh, man, we're thankful to have you tonight, and we're ready to get into it. I want to. Really, uh, if you could, Travis, give us a little bit of background about yourself. And regardless of the things that you talked about in the past podcast, let's just start fresh tonight. Let's cover pretty much everything and anything you want to talk about. And we really want to pick your brains. I don't know if you can see the chats. That's one of the cool things about this uh, live feed here. If you look to the right, you'll be able to see everybody's comments. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions. If you can't see the chats, we'll certainly pick out some of the um, the questions and, and try to get as many questions answered tonight as we can hey travis uh, i want to i want to tell you so both great. something yeah. so so travis when we were up in new york there was a bag of z-man in the boat and i noticed that it was really different feeling and then it occurred to me that that's one of the bags you've been soaking yeah <laughs> so i i took that bag and i put it in my pocket and you were looking for it and i fished it all day and i pretty much <laughs> i did put the beat down on you that day even though you were looking at him. So I, that's the biggest testament I could give to what this man's about to say. I'm like, why are these Z-Man so soft? Like, what is going on? I'm like, these are the ones he soaked. And then he's looking for that bag, and I had it in my pocket the whole day. I just kept, I like would turn around and rig it and wouldn't tell him where it was. That's you funny. are digging through your stuff to find it, man. And they ate it like crazy. <laughs> He's going to frisk you now when you get on the boat. He is, you know, I know, man. Um, that's the only. I, your was pocket. My, Travis, that was my dirty little secret. I I waited. I've been for waiting real. months to tell this story, and here it is. I remember is. looking for that bag. <clears throat> you do, and it was in my pocket the whole time. Huh. And they ate it. Why? I don't even the the, the mm. X factor of what how they ate it was just kind of ridiculous. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, and of course, <laughs> uh, it, you know, but. but <laughs> By doing that, and I'm sure Travis, you've noticed since our talk that uh, that you know your drop rates are different on that on that stuff now too. Um, after having soaked it, um, that's that stuff's an absolute sponge. So uh, your drop rates are going to be different. Of course, uh, it, you know longevity of the baits is different than uh, most guys are accustomed to. So mm -hmm. um, you know it's a win-win all the way around. It, it's just. Uh, something I've been doing for, I don't know, 12, 15 years. I don't think anything about it. I, you know, so when I passed that on the uh, first time that we, uh, we were on here, I was like, well, I thought everybody did this stuff, you know, I, I don't know. So uh, I used to put, um, I would put but smelly I, I, jelly on all my Z man. And, and I noticed um, I would use the UV. It didn't penetrate the plastic, but if you believe in smelly jelly, I feel like I got more bites but it wasn't soaked in kind of like a max scent is into the plastisol uh, or whatever formula they make. So sure. very different. When you say the drop rates, can you explain sure. that to people? Cause I want to understand that too. And it, and does it float different? I haven't looked at it in a tank, Travis, you probably have, but talk about that drop rate. What do you mean? Uh, do you still want to hear where I'm from? Yes. Oh, sorry, man. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a quick intro before we get into the hard questions eric yeah man sorry man i just go right to business drop right tell us about it let's get to it no, right I, from. no I now, Tra you. travis give um, us a little story a little background about yourself if you could sure uh as we covered the first time uh you know just real quick i was born and raised in upstate new york right between oneida and cayuga um, I had a Susquehanna feeder uh, right in the backyard on our property growing up, and th that's pretty much where I got addicted to the uh, the moving water. And um, it, you know, I, I've fished all over the country and stuff, and uh, 
uh, River Small Miles in my blood, and it always will be. That's my deal. So, and that's all I do. What uh, particular now? Of course, what... I'm in the. Uh... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, there's a little leg. Um, I was just curious, like, what part of the country do you live now, and and what style of fishing kind of suits your needs, and and what you do where you're located now. Uh, I, I'm in the uh, eastern panhandle of West Virginia. Oh wow! And I, I I've got <clears> access <throat> to uh, meet on all the uh, all the really good smallmouth rivers on the east coast, and there's a reason we live here. Oh wow! Um, it, as far as what what you know what what suits my style is uh you know big river smallmouth that's my style what part of west virginia when you say eastern part of like what's because we have family in west virginia kaiser but i don't know what part of the state that's in i'm not geographically like where what that's pretty close to big state yeah that's pretty close are you are you kidding me yeah oh that's so cool no, I, I, wow. Yeah, I, that, I, I'm very familiar with Kaiser. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, awesome. What rivers? When you say you chase the big river smallmouth, what rivers up there? I know the Potomac got a nice dose of boat ramps, and it's untapped, really. Um, right. Um, for me to put that out there, I would probably oh. have to move because there would okay. be <laughs> ne never mind. Then never mind. Okay, it, it's fair it, enough. It, 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 it's almost. We don't want you to have to move. It, you know, no, no, it's no. Almost like it's, that, it's fine. <laughs> it's almost That's like funny. that trout deal where it, you know it, yep. you find those big those big stream trout and nobody wants to disclose it and stuff like that. And, you know, and I'm not trying to be. Uh, evasive or anything but uh you know i've had 17 years now of fishing for you know wow. big smallmouth on waters that i rarely see people and i'd like to keep it that way that i err on oh, the man. side of the fish you're you're uh you're a rare man in the world so uh one of the few fishermen i know that could keep a secret that's awesome because not many i know can <laughs> i um i i will <laughs> say this that uh, anywhere that I fish, uh, someone that owns a jet drive, mm. they're not going where I go. How about that? Wow. It, it, you want to elaborate on that? Because that's got me thinking, how is that possible? Are you waiting? They can't even get there with a jet drive. What? All right, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, more, no more, no more FBI like All questions. Right, that's I, that's I could enough. be a, I could be a good interrogator. But anyway, let's just say you've got special access. Jet drives yeah. can't get there. Use your imagination, everybody. I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm thinking. Four wheel drive stuff. Secret Who knows? Caves, I also, uh, uh, ba uh, Batman openings in the it, forest. It, uh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I live on the water, um, as well. It's right in the backyard. And man you're not you're getting dedicated. access to it unless you own unless you own here uh you're not getting to where we're at so i wow. um I, i've got about three rivers that i fish but jets aren't going where yeah. i go that's so cool man it's nice to have you know beautiful calm serene water that nobody well, can get to well, I know that I know that you really are big into finesse baits and different ways of presenting baits, and you really think differently. That's one thing that stood out uh, in your podcast was how you present that bait, how you make it look natural, how you work that bait through that cover, regardless of what river you're on, whether it be a secret little river or a river that gets pounded on. I think a lot of these tips that you're going to be able to share with us tonight, guys will be able to utilize and uh, and hopefully you know help them catch more fish. But another thing you're big into, and we kind of alluded to that was sense and soaking and that's a whole nother uh topic and we're going to definitely ask some questions about that because we're already seeing some questions here in the in the comments pop up about that but let's talk a little bit about some of your favorite techniques if we could some different ways that you like to fish for these rivers small mouth and then let's kind of talk a little bit about the sense and, and save that for a little bit later sure uh, um I, my favorite techniques um 
And quite honestly, I think back in uh, 2015, Joe Baylog did an article on Bass mm. Man that, that I think probably uh, would be advantageous for a, a great many river smallmouth angler that you, you know to peruse. And um, where the title of that was uh, "Fish of a Lifetime," and, and Joe went into great detail that upon moving to Florida, he kind of had this. Uh, homage if you will of the baits that had taken all his big ones you know up north and uh right at the very end of that article he stated on there that uh that, you know all of his big fish primarily came on five baits and wow. I, i'm a really big believer in not being mm -hmm. all over the board with presentations and a jack of all trades in a master of nothing and what I throw, I know, and mm. I've got the utmost confidence that if I put it, you know, those, those baits in front of a small, he's going to, I'm at least going to see one. Um, you know, I might have a follower. I might see one. I might see one roll on it. I might see a big black tail go down on a bait. And if I can see them, I, I mean, uh, at, heck, I might come back two days later and, you know, get them to commit. Uh, but I, I, I keep really extensive logs uh, as to where those fish are located. Um, if the fish is big enough, I go back multiple times and I, I try to get that fish to commit. <clears throat> so um, I carry three spinning rods um, primarily, and they're not your typical rods, uh, really, that River Smalley guys, um, you know, are probably carting around with. Um, that, you know, throwing little grubs and maybe little number seven rappels on and stuff like that. I, I, I throw a lot of my stuff is great light stuff, but, you know, a lot of seven, six medium heavy spins, um, you know, just bigger fish tackle. Um, and that's what I'm after. Uh, uh, you know, the first time that I, when I was on with you, Travis, I told you that I, I, I'm not a numbers guy. Um, I could go behind our house and probably bang out 30, 40 smallmouth in an afternoon. Um, but that's, that's not my gig. Uh, I, I'm after 20 inch and up fish and that's what I target. Hmm. So the big trophy. I'd be glad to elaborate on, you know, yes, sir. Yeah. I'd love to know, you know, carrying three spinning rods with you, some, some, you know, as far as the techniques that you're you're utilizing in these rivers, what would be some of the top baits that you gravitate towards? And does it vary based on time of the year? Uh, first and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've got three spinning rods. I carry two casting rods. My two casting rods are for treble hook baits, moving baits. Um, if uh, whether or not that's a you know. A, a crank or a jerk bait or a top water is going to depend on fish activity and what stretch of the river I'm fishing. Um, the three spinning rods that I carry, uh, there's always a variation of the Nico crawl on, on one of them. And whether or not that's on, if I've got some uh, stain to the water. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, back in, Back in August, Travis, when we were on, my water is gin clear, um, absolutely crystal clear, you know, trout looking water. Mm -hmm. um, if I've got color to the water, Nico crawl in on that. Yep. Okay. So that's on a jig. If, if I've got gin, yes, sir. That's on a jig. That's that's uh, that's with a gammy two ninety one bronze hook in it, and that's a pretty serious hook. Hmm. Interesting. Is that a custom jig that you make, or is that something that people can buy as well? Because I see it has some skirt material. I'm just kind of curious about that. Uh, round rubber. It's made by uh, the same guy that makes my sled head, Ryan Alooney at North Branch Tackle. Okay. And, uh, you know, did you say like, a sled uh, head? The first time I was on, yes, sir. 
Interesting. You don't see many jigs with a sled head. Um, uh, that one there's a football. Yeah, if I got I some saw color that, to the water. That's on. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If I got I've color, never, in the I've never water seen whatsoever. It. Yep. That one's yeah. on now. Got it. If I got gin clear water, like I often do. Yep. Uh, that Nico crawl on a sled is is my deal. Um, I'd like to see that sled I, head thinking, is intriguing. That's very cool. Have you if seen you, that, Travis? The sled head? Not up close, Travis. If you can hold yeah. that up, I'm gonna I'm gonna make your screen big just for a second. Mm -hmm. Show us the underside with the with the actual um, the underside with the weight. There you go. That's okay. the sled part that's fascinating to me. And I see that you maybe have it painted a little bit. That's a Sally Hansen job, maybe. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we uh we probably keep Sally Hansen in business there, Mr. Eric. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, man. Oh, I geez. bought some. There was a um <laughs> there's a company that makes the sled head and they make a craw. And um it got me fascinated because of why you would use a sled head versus a regular lead head jig. And I'm curious to know why you're picking the sled head what does it do for you how does it come through rock and cover it's clear you're fishing a lot of that it, it, uh, listen absolutely a absolutely incredible uh mm -hmm. I, it, you, you can't wedge that yeah I, it, it just won't wedge. and isn't that uh, amazing you know and like i uh like I got into uh, with Travis originally, um, I, I had, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years of using mushroom heads. You know, the original right. go for mushrooms. Sure. And it, it, it just, I, I cannot fish those as slowly as I was, I would like, um, given, you know, the rivers that I fish on uh, without sure. being wedged or with either sure. I got to speed up uh, to uh, this thing here is like live bait without a folder scan. I mean, it, it's just nuts. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing? Um, and I had a hard time what, finding a good sled head with a good hook, meaning I wanted to use it for largemouth. I saw the application for river smallmouthing, but I'm thinking to myself in some of the areas that are rocky that I'm fishing largemouth, it presents the bait differently with a, with a regular jig football it's going like this and it's, you know, or mushroom head, any head it's right. weight full. That is more weight horizontal. So the bait falls naturally. Right. Cause if you see a crawl scurry, he, he floats down like that. Right. He doesn't do this. He does yeah, that. So, right. Right. So what kind of, do you have right. a, a uh, good um, not to hook on that sled head? Yeah. Um, yeah. My body uh, will, Pour any size hook that I want, and I, this one here has got wow. a two watt owner, and right I've got on. the new uh, SPS uh, screw lock in that that's made for super plastics. Uh, so I love it. it. So right I, love I, mean, it. I love it. Are you? Do you love have it. a hard time? Because as with Z Man and Nico, how are you getting that screw lock into that Nico craw? This one does it. Is it the owner centering pin? It, it just came over. No, it, it's a new one. It, it's uh oh, wonderful CPS. It, it's it, it's made for super plastics, and so it, it's awesome. I mean, it really is so brilliant, uh, so um, brilliant. Wow. So I know you. I real quick because I know well, I, your your buddy Ryan that does this. Is this something? Because here's what's going to happen. I don't want to give out his name without your permission and contacts because there's he's going to get bombarded here i'm sure um is, is that he got something bombarded you think, the first time do you think he would mind <laughs> if we did that could we what's the best way to reach out to him because i'm going to probably want to get some of these and i need to know exactly what i should ask because i want that sled head i want to throw these nico craws on that so what is the exact setup that i need to ask for that if you get a hold of him at North Branch Tackle, and I believe he's probably in the audience um, right now, 
Uh, if you get a hold of him at North Ranch Tackle uh, and you tell him that you want my sled that goes into the Nico Craw, he knows okay. exactly what that prescription is. Okay. But uh, Perfect. Mr. Eric, you, you nailed it when you talked about, you, you know, you, you got a kicked out craw. Anybody that's ever walked in a river, you got a kicked out craw that you didn't even see. And that thing kicks out just like that. It That thing is trying to get back down as fast as it can, just like that. Not like mm -hmm. that. That's right. It's that. And, yep. it, and it's just dead on. I mean, it really is. This thing is just nasty. Eric, can you see that pulling through grass? You know I, I can I mean? see it. I, that's why I, I I bought a bunch from a company that is a river company, and I, I have to, I got it in the back, but I wasn't happy with the gauge hook for my largemouth application, and I went to tying skirt material in front of the sled head to make it like a jig. And so my concept was I, I tied this shaky jig worm and that was my right. original version of my shaky jig worm because it looked you can put a crawl, you can put a worm on that. But to be able to slide through grass, as Travis just said, and rock and wood, it seemed to be way more snagless to me. I caught some fish on it, but again, I didn't trust the hook and I couldn't find anybody to pour custom for the right hook that I wanted for how I fish. Um so, uh, man, it's interesting. Yeah, my guy, that you, my guy can do you, it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'll, me and Travis will be talking to him. So, Travis, make sure we talk. Yeah. I'm, before I'm, you, you, I'm you know, talking you, to him tomorrow you, morning. You, yes. Because which is, he's going to get slammed is, today. He's not going to get back to us. I wish I would have done this yesterday before the live stream. But now we're <laughs> now we're now we're just like everybody else. You got to wait in line. Um, <laughs> That's some good stuff. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Nico Craw. You guys all you, you guys know that. I fish it on uh, a net head a lot, and I've had some very good success on the Chesapeake Bay for largemouth with this. I've messed around a little bit with smallmouth. I haven't given the whole full on, which I plan on doing this year. Is that the best way to fish these baits on that sled, in your opinion, or is there other ways that you rig these baits as well? Uh, that, that right there, if you're wanting that to go through anything, it's going to okay. go through anything. Um, and, and like I touched on too, uh, you know, if I've got any kind of uh, adverse conditions in regards to clarity on my waters, um, that's when it goes on that there. And that's shortened a little bit. That's got that that same 291 gammy in it. Okay. Um, and he can make those jigs for us I as mean, well? Yeah, he made this one. Okay, I'll have to ask for I got those. Him, I got him hard at work on uh, on a bunch. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, bet. I, I I I told Ryan. Yeah, I I, I told Ryan. Uh, you know, I kept asking him. I said, are, "Are you ready to get busy?" I said because he got busy the first time that I sure. was on, and I know, you know, he probably will again. But uh, he's a great guy. Uh, on the north branch of the Susquehanna. He knows what he's doing with lead. Mm -hmm. Nice, man. That's such a huge thing. It's just it, so frustrating to be snagged constantly with the regular mushroom style. Had to be able to fish free and present a crawl bait in a way more natural way. You're way more efficient. So now you've got your line in the water more. You're presenting it more in a more natural way. Uh, the efficiency factor just goes up from a from a fish to catch to strike cool. ratio. It's crazy. That's awesome, man. Wow. Yes, now is, is that hook yes, exposed that, 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 or are you Texas rigging that back into that craw? It's with a screw lock, Texas. Rig. Um, like skin. No, but is the point back embedded in the plastic or is that sticking out exposed? Tech exposed. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And look at the hump of the craw. The, it, the hump of the craw kind of protects it. It's got very cool. It's perfect. Yes, if <laughs> it's absolutely like it anything touches touches this here, um, if anything touches that right there um, at all, th I mean, I catch uh, 10, 12 inch smallies on that without even hardly setting a hook. I mean, it's just, it, it's right there. And, and the gap in that is, 
I mean, it's like having a, an exposed head. I mean, it really is. Okay. I, I don't miss fish on that thing. I mean, I, I just don't. Freaking awesome. Now, are what, you a what, what, Are you a, so, Sorry, can I ask? We got too many questions here. <laughs> what weight is that one that you're typically fishing? People are asking, how deep are you fishing that particular sled head? And, and what does that weight weigh? And how heavy do you fish the sled head for different depths? I'll fish a sixteenth to a quarter. Wow! Um, and a lot of that will hear. depend on you know what stretch, what stretches of what certain rivers I'm on, and and uh, sure. But I will say this: that uh, if anyone's ever walked, you know, in a river, or creek, or whatever, and flipped rocks, um, everything that you're seeing on the bottom in that substrate of moving around on the bottom. That's exactly what you're trying to emulate. Um, well, this thing is fantastic. I would almost call what I do with this, I don't care what month it is, it's almost like I'm fishing in winter. How about that? And by wow. that, I mean very methodically and very slow. Uh, if I'm convinced I'm in a big fish area, they're going to see that thing. And it's not going anywhere unless they pick it up. I mean, I'll uh, I'll sit there and dead stick it for, you know, five ten minutes. And wow. I want it sitting Whoa. totally stationary. I I don't That's want so it drifting. Crazy. I'm not I'm not jiggling it. I'm not putting imparting anything. The current will activate. You know, activate that thing. And fascinating. Uh, the most famous my Texas big small rig mouth fisherman. Up. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was yeah, going to go say, yeah. the, the, the most famous Texas rig fisherman of all time, Bill Dance, would say, if you think you're fishing slow, slow down even further. Sl yeah. To catch bigger, yeah, slow down even further. And you're verifying what he said in an incredible yeah. way. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big, uh, really big believer in uh, in river smallmouth being uh, highly lethargic. And if you make it easy for them, you're just up in your odds. Um, now, of course, guys are going to say, well, you know, my Uncle Bobby took one on a number two map spinner back in, you know, 78. <laughs> but I, I, I'm talking – you know, consistently taking big fish, uh, you're going to do yourself a favor if you know how to read water. If you're fishing bigger baits, deeper and slower. Uh, very big believer in that bigger, deeper, slower, but, you know, equation on bigger fish. Are, are, you, fishing, are you fishing? So there's that one thing. Sure. That that specific technique, are you a braid to a floral carbon guy or are you straight floral? Uh for years, quite honestly, I didn't want to mess with connection knot. I fished straight braid for probably 15 years. Wow. Wow. I, I mean, I I I I didn't care. Um for the connection knot, I didn't want I didn't want that link, you know that weak link. I, I didn't want to hear it going through my guides. I, I didn't want to mess mm. with it. I just and and guys, I fish gin clear water. I mean, I really do. Uh, predominantly, it, it's nothing for me, it, you know, to be able to see 12, 15 feet down, and that's not even in, when it's really clear. That's crazy. Wow. And what pound braid and what color braid? If you tell me high vis yellow, I'm absolutely going to lose my shit. <laughs> that they were eating high vis yellow braid with no um, leader. Yeah, uh, yeah, green. Okay, good. Green gamma. What? What pound? Yeah. What pound? Uh, I, I run uh, on anything dealing with the craw. I run uh, ten pound gamma. Torque. And they were eating it. They were eating it with no leader for 15 years. That absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. I had a guy, yeah, I, I had I, a guy, uh, I, there's I, a guy that, that fishes 65 pound high vis yellow in tidal water, which is so t- the tidal water I'm talking about is that tannic water, Travis. Yep. 65 pound high vis yellow flipping Senkos and places in the money constantly. Never 65 hmm. pound high vis yellow says they don't care. I'm like, that just blows my brain up hmm. i mean i i travis what is your reaction you throw five pound braid but i know you throw it for a different reason which is to get deeper because you're fishing great lakes etc so mm-hmm. but still mm-hmm. it just you know you always think you have to go light line and that it matters and uh, but wow i mean that's a that's a, just interesting to me thank I you i can see can that I, I think we need to maybe proceed. play around with that a little bit yeah proceed I'm just listening, man. I'm taking notes. I got another clean sheet of paper ready to go Uh, because I I I used up my envelope. (laughs) (laughs) Been there, done that on any piece of paper you can find. That's how you know it's a great show when you just have to like scrounge for a piece of paper because you've got this nugget of information coming through. I feel you on that one, Travis. I have a lot of notes in this drawer right here. (laughs) Here they are. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Wow, keep keep going, Travis. Yeah, yeah, that's so, great stuff. So, have you changed, and now you're using a leader? I experimented with that last year, and I hate it. Ooh, so you're going <laughs> I, I back? Just, I hate it. I, I don't like straight. It. I, I just don't like anything about it. I, I I'm not. I uh, I drank the Kool Aid on that, and I, I'm back home. <laughs> And, 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 so, somebody told you to tie the you know, FT knot. Yep, the FT <laughs> knot at it again. <laughs> I mean, if it's not broke, why fix it, right? I mean, I, right. I, I got a, I got a buddy of mine that's watching tonight that actually showed me a really good knot on the water, and um, I mean, it was quick, it's strong. Um, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I just. It's, I don't need it. I mean, I just don't need it. Fascinating. That's fascinating. You know, he had me, uh, you know, we're, we were on a great bite last summer and, it, you know, he had me over in the weeds tying this Alberto knot. And, you know, oh, yeah. it, I know it. that's great. It, it, I just don't need to do it. I mean, I just don't. Uh, I've taken too many fish in my lifetime to think that, but it's, you know, and I understand the confidence. Uh, everyone's got a confidence level um, in whatever that may be. And I, I'm not saying anything that I do is a holy grail. It just works for me. Yeah. I mean, it's just that's, I always find it fascinating, different perspectives, different gear. That's uh, that's what this show's all about, man. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we tried it. Didn't, you know, you're back home, man. You're back home to what's comfortable and what works and what's right. worked for 15 years. Why change your, you're stinging big smallmouth every year with <laughs> right. a sure hook set. Cause I mean, yeah. uh, you know, fishing straight braid, 10 pound gamma torque. Uh, I imagine that, you know, I don't know what your rod setup is with your three different spinning rods. I see your Dobbin shirt. Um, but you know, the positive hook set that you get with straight braid is pretty dang incredible. You know, you're penetrating. Uh, there's just, you know, it's going to be right. there for you. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Fascinating. I'm blown and, away once uh, again. Uh, you know, and a lot of uh, a lot of what I do uh, involves quite a bit of stealth, and uh, sure. I, I can absolutely bomb cast straight braid. And uh, oh my gosh, right? Um, it, you know, and and I mean absolutely bomb cast. You know, a sixteen ounce and a craw to stay off those mm. fish and, uh, you wow. know, remain healthy. It just, it helps wow. me. Wow. Um, wow. Wow. Great point. Great point. Seven, yeah. six, medium, heavy is everything that I fish across on to seven, six, medium, heavy Dobbins extreme. I love is, I, I my mean, that's a, seven, six know, conquest. I love that rod because it can cast a mile. I, like I threw an Okashira screw. Yeah, the nine hundred two. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, for me, it's a, it's a, it's the. Yeah, I think it might be. It's a Conquest seven six. It's um, it's a Loomis for me, and um, 
I love yes, the way the lo- yes, rod loads. Nine on two. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm in love with that rod. I can drop shot. I can Ned rig. I can I can do it all in that rod. I can throw hair jigs. I can throw. I threw an Okashira screw head on Kerr last year in in the freaking championship and put several good big large mouth in the boat on that thing. It handles the fish, man. I just love that length of that rod. Seven yeah. six. It was my first seven six. I never had a seven six. I always had seven one seven two, but never a seven six. And that extra, you know. Anyway, worked for me great. Still one of my favorite rods that I've ever owned from a spinning rod with a 3,000 reel. 4,000, right. sorry, 4,000. Yeah. I like the bigger spool. It comes off easier, less coils. I pick up a lot more line with it. I'm a, I'm, mm. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. Anyway. Right. So, Travis, the uh, the other two spinning rods right, uh, you know, that you have set up, you, you talked about the Nico Craw. Yeah. What are some other techniques that you mm. love throwing? Um, the other one is a, uh, it's a custom Helgramite, the, the custom Nico Helgramite, um, that's not sold, but I make them. Um, oh, wow. I, I wanted one that, uh, appealed to a little bit bigger fish. Mm. Um, and that's a, and I can also color, color, you know, I can take one bait and turn it into an, another one and have uh, colors that aren't available. That I guess is probably the best way I can put it. Very cool. So are and, you subscribing? Uh, I, so it to, takes, oh, sorry. So it, it, it takes sorry, me I, two of the Nico Helgramites to make one of mine. Very interesting. So are you um, subscribing about, to the concept? Sorry, I keep forgetting about the delay. Um, I just no. the bigger bait, bigger no, bass, no. bigger bait, bigger bait, bigger bass concept in your mind. Have you seen that prove true? Not necessarily. Uh, I deal with a lot of 10 and 12 inch smallmouth. Okay. I deal, I deal with a, an awful lot of pan fish, mm. a lot of incidentals. Mm. And it, there's almost like this length limit where it, if I'm under a certain length, I mean, I'm catching panfish, they're beating my big smallies to my baits. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, just literally hordes of, uh, you, you know, rock bass and green sunfish and whatnot um, How about that, that? are that – are, that are picking off my smallmouth bait. So um, over the years, I've very gradually, because I used to be a, you know, nothing over three inch guy. Yeah. For years, uh, you know, going back to like Ned Cady's articles uh, that I used to submit with him. I mean, none of my baits were over three inches on there. And uh, um, for bigger fish, you know, if I if I've got ten or fifteen green sunfish pecking the you know bejesus out of my bait, it's kind of a deterrent for you know a five pound smallie. Sure. You know, so um, interesting. That, you know, so I've went bigger. Um, as a result, over the years, I, I've went bigger, deeper, slower. Uh, so my Nico Helgramite's four. Uh, I make one that's four, and also one that's four and a half inches. Okay. Um, which is considerably bigger than the, than the three inch. Yeah. Um, there is a twist on that. Um, I do, I do fish that also on the sled. Um, nice. the Helga mites flat and you, you know, I get a really good drop rate on that. Um, most notably in the summer mm. and, uh, with that, that lead being distributed just as you touched on underneath instead of in the nose. Um, sure. I get that, that drop and, uh, yeah. um, even more noticeably with the bigger Helger mite. Uh, it, it's just, I do one thing to it other than just add length to it. Um, there's a joint in the back of it. Hmm. Uh, when I did stick that bait, the whole back, the whole back end of that bait curls up just nice. like that right there. 
when I'm, dead, when I'm dead sticking it. That's so cool. If anyone's ever uh, flipped, if anyone's ever uh, you know flipped some rocks in a stream, and just you like touch a Helgi. Yeah, that that's what that's they do. crazy. Uh, so that's so cool. Travis, so listen I, to that. I feel what? like I feel what like. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel you like go. this this Slow bait down. this bait. Easy. Obviously, we can't have access to it. So you're kind of teasing us. That's not fair. But in the comments, <laughs> people want to see this. Can you hold it up? Is that okay? Or if you no. don't want to, that's fine. No, don't do it, Travis. The, the people take a screenshot and pour it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> no, use your imagination, um, everybody. <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, uh, there, there are a couple. There, there are a couple guys uh, watching this uh, that will see it tied on my rod this year when they come fish with me. Um, yeah, that's about probably it. Scott Barrett at Nico. We'll see this. We'll see this in person. Uh, Very cool. And I know my buddy Adam Fankovic out of Maryland's watching. He, he'll he'll see it. So you touched um, on two. You touched on two I, things. I, I, Secondary action. This is a really important point, and I talk about this a lot in baits. I talk that, about it in crank baits that, where I'm digging a crank bait. Yeah. yeah, it's that it well, yeah, you might even have tertiary going. So listen, I mean, that's a whole other dimension. So there's secondary uh -huh. action. He's well, tertiary right. is third, secondary is two, three. So if you get right. two actions out of a bait, you get a tertiary action. I want to hear the tertiary action because that that is the bait's doing something else on its own while he's dead sticking, taking advantage of the current. He's designed the bait to do that. That's brilliant in my mind. You've got the you know the horizontal fall. And the bigger bait concept, bigger bass. This is something that got my attention, Travis, to speak to you. I've never seen you throw it, and I'm curious why you don't. Maybe you have in tournaments and you never talked about it. But some of the winning bags that came from smallmouth tournaments on Great Lake Water, St. Lawrence, or other, they were fishing a full-size fluke. Sure. A full-size fluke. Bigger bait, bigger bass. You know, interesting. I... I gobies i never knew this but gobies can be like six inches or something or eight like and they're dark not the creamy colored little juveniles and so if you're in a school of smallmouth and there's a six in there and you throw this bigger bait a bigger goby imitator is the bigger dominant fish going to get there first maybe or is that going to appeal to the bigger fish in the school i don't know i'm not a smallmouth expert but you got my brain going and I, I, I know there are bigger baits. Like if I think about my tidal water, the seven inch Senko, the seven inch willow blade on a spinner bait, slow rolling, larger baits in the spring for bigger, small mouth. I mean, large mouth, bigger crank baits. I've proven that to myself and in a boat with somebody throwing a 1.5 versus a BDS four. They'll get the smaller bites. I'll catch the fours, fives, and sixes behind them when they're getting that first cast. Every prime lie where on rip wrap where a largemouth could be a pre-spawn female. It, it's just fascinating to me. You're confirming some things in my brain that are working for your river smallmouth. Fascinating. It's good stuff. So talk yeah. about the tertiary yeah, action. Absolutely. Okay. Well, dead stick in that. When I'm when I dead stick that, and I'm not moving that at all. And again, I, I I'm really uh, adamant on getting my the drop on my lead and plastic right. And okay. uh, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there are a few guys out there that have fished with me and would uh, definitely note that, that I mean. I have no problem cutting, you know, cutting lead off and going a sixteenth ounce more or less just to, you know, wow. get that drop rate down for where sure. I'm fishing. And uh, uh, just like a, I, you know, and I touched on with Travis the first time that we met uh, that I've always been a believer in what Rick Kwan touched on years ago. And that's uh, if you wish to know the owl, study the mouse. And mm. I, I study what they eat more than I do the actual smallmouth. And go. I follow that very, very closely through the year. Wow. Um, whether they're on, 
it, you know, the, the Helgramite deal for me is about a three month thing. Craw is longer. Um, so I'm following, the, you know, not only locationally where they're at, but also what they're actually eating. The Helgramite deal, uh, the three months, is that dead of summer? What, what if you could sum up those three months? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so summer. To, to, if uh, okay. if I've got a big fish that uh, I've got located, or maybe uh, you know a couple big fish that I've got located, and maybe I've located them on a uh, on a top water. Um, if they either have missed or committed, and I miss them, or you know for any reason or whatever, I'm going back. And I will, I'll dead stick that Helgramite right in her face. Uh, uh, it, that's typically me going after one or two fish. It's amazing. You're like trophy hunting a big yeah. deer, <laughs> right? It's like you found this 10 point buck right. in a stretch of right. river and you're bomb casting them and you're making sure you got the exact fall rate. You're matching the hatch. Right. It's you've studied it like Rick. Cl I mean, that's extraordinary. Right. Wow. Hats off to you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I dial it into what you're saying. I used to do that. I'm like probably with, not with, I was going to say. Yeah, I'm uh, probably I, not wired, you know. All, <laughs> I'm probably not wired all that tight for fishing like that. But, uh, you know, that's my gig and that's what I love doing. So That's fascinating. I uh, fished the north branch of the Potomac River which you probably know it's, you know, relatives in West Virginia. We've got a place in Western Maryland, a deep Creek. Yeah, sure. And there was this one bend in the river. I mean, it was a deep cut undercut bank and there was a massive tree that roots grew in and this Brown trout that had to be close to 30 inches, long snaky Brown trout. And he was my nemesis. And so I tied up um, and he's a meat eater. Big he's not zonker. eating bugs anymore. Big he, zonker. Not, bigger yeah. than a big zonker. I tied an articulating zonker. Yeah. Um, but I but I also tied yeah. up some brown trout imitators and and rainbow trout, like like they looked like tarpon flies. And my buddies laughed at me. I said, Okay, watch. And so I went up there with an eight weight with right. monic fly line, which was clear fly line. That's how crazy I was. It was not colored like your typical fly line. Mm -hmm. And um I, I, I basically crept behind the tree like a hunter would. And then I leaned up against the tree. I did the bow and arrow shoot. I shot my fly. That brown trout came shooting out from under that thing, ate it and took off so fast. He broke my leader and we all just had a good laugh. But I got that fish to bite. I looked at him for years. I knew he yeah. ate meat. He didn't want my woolly boogers. I did upstream presentations like I would go upstream crouched down i know he didn't see me and i would feed the fly line first no small baits did not get it for him he wanted a big piece of meat and i tied up a fly in my bass lab right here and got that fish to eat i didn't land him but i got him to eat mm. anyway yeah same day i hooked a, another monster yeah. and i had several come up out of like the depths like a submarine rise look at my fly and reject it because i didn't have the float right i didn't have the presentation it didn't look natural to them it got their attention like you see big bass follow a glide bait but i didn't present the fly right meaning it, it it made me think of how you want that fall rate or the drop rate exactly right something was wrong with how i presented the fly it got them to look but didn't get them to commit but i did get that big brown to commit i never caught him but i i hear what you're saying stream i saw that fish for years could never get him to even move on my fly mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. He worked that whole beat. He's still right. there. I don't know how big he is now. He might have died, but that was an old fish. Very cool. Very good. Very good. Yeah, good stories, right? The, the what first, would actually that that ties in beautifully with uh, the the first time that I was on with Travis. He asked me to kind of give him a rundown as to what kind of water I fish, and I said that I concentrate on median water in trout terms, which is well down mm. from the headwaters where adult sure. brown trout look in water 
where they're eating suckers and chubs and not yeah. rising to flies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Is. I can relate. Um, they're meat eaters, man. Yeah. The big trout are meat eaters. Very fascinating, yeah. man. That, yeah, I, I hear you now. Hey, I've got yeah. a visualization of where you're at. Cool. Very, well, let's very talk similar about- to uh, what, what I do for the smallmouth. Very similar. Interesting. Yeah, you're a hunter. You, that's so cool, man. You stalk big, big, big trophy smallmouth. How cool is that? The visual part of the yeah. game, because that's why I loved uh, trout fishing. Like I could go to a stream, and there's a stream, Catoctin Mountain. It's where um, it's in it's in um, not Western Maryland, but it's up above uh, Frederick. And there's this one beat, and it's like twelve inches of water absolutely gin clear unless there's a heavy rain when i say gin clear i mean gin clear there are these two big trout that work that beat not big enough to eat meat they would eat flies and i had to crawl <laughs> and then i did a downstream presentation of a size 20 midge that i tied in my basement right here and i caught that fish i caught one of them out of the pool and that was like for me a lifetime achievement award because it's right by the road they get fished every day they get the shit kicked out of them, and you have to be, you got to be correct. Everything had to be correct. And I think my tippet was like two pound tippet, or, and I played that fish and I landed it and released it. I love the aspect that you visually can see some of these monster smallmouth you're chasing. That's crazy. That's fine. Uh, how, I mean, you get to do that, Travis. I don't get to see the fish that I catch most of the time. Sure. I don't know that I've ever seen a smallie with Travis that I've caught yet, but I hope to do it one day with him. He wants to take me up there when they're spawning shallow but that would be something to see because that's there's just a whole nother level oh it's a lot of fun i need to we need to we need to keep rolling here i need to know some baits that we can actually buy and use okay you (laughs) tease us too much what else you got (laughs) because obviously we can't get a hold of this mega helgramite for some reason um danico crawl I can't. What else? What else do you want? <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't touch on anything more on the Helger Mite. Uh, the best thing that I can say is, uh, stay tuned. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um. Could you talk about drop rate? That was my question before you even got to introduce yourself. I'm sorry I went in so fast. I was excited. Uh, but how, when you soak a bait, does that increase your drop rate because now it's heavier on the Z-Man? And I'll be right yeah, back. It's, I'm not it, it, yeah, yeah it's, it, it is heavier. Uh, you know, load it up with the scent. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Very cool. Now, if I, if I take... Uh, if I take all the, uh, you know, like I used to, where I would take all of my Ned Rig baits, all the popular Ned Rig baits, and uh, I would pre-silk them to get all the salt out to adjust yep. that drop. Um, yep. That scent is still not going to increase it as much as the salt did. Oh, wow. Okay. So when it's soaked and so, saturated uh, with the it, scent, it, is it lighter? Um, it, it's lighter than they are out of the pack. Oh, wow. Okay. So it, it releases the salt, takes the scent, and now it's a lighter bait. So you can go with a heavier head or you have to adjust your head for whatever you were doing before. Interesting. Right. Does it still float? Yes, like, does the Z-Man? Okay. So the plastic still will float. It's still a floating plastic, um, with a whole lot less salt. Interesting. Before Z-Man, De- were you doing it with on, the Zero? Uh, yeah, long before the uh, the Ned Rig uh, craze hit, um, I, I think I started throwing a Ned Rig in about 2009. Wow. Um, you know, with, with the, the 3X plastics uh, on sure. the original Gophers. Sure, sure, uh, sure. And, I used uh, to like the... You know, sure. like the, the, the sure. old... The old, uh, like woolly hog, you know, the little, you know, and yeah. uh, generic oh, yeah. two yeah. inch tubes, it, it, you know. Oh, yeah. sure, sure, sure. The um, so a lot of years, I'm sure, a lot of years doing that. 
are, are you're probably a contributor to and even though you don't live in the midwest uh, the midwest finesse forum from in fisherman i found that to be really a fascinating forum um i don't know where i read the original ned rig story from but when i met travis i don't think he ever threw a ned and i talked about it and travis was like what and i'm like dude um i had some zeros that um i'd cut in half and that was my original ned rig and Travis right. didn't think much of it, but now he's right. a Ned fanatic. Um, and that's only a short time ago. Sure. But Jimmy Steiner, my buddy, big time Jimmy, used to be on the show. I took him out and I'm like, try this Ned rig out. And he goes, what is that? And I'm like, dude, just cut that freaking. Uh, you used to be on the show. You act like he's not invited back. Jimmy's oh, I always welcome back. Up. OK, all right. Anyway, so, so so we took a we took a we took a basically a Senko and cut it in half. Literally, Travis and Travis, his first cast. On the upper bay, which is a river, he caught a bass, like two pounds. And he goes, that's unbelievable. And then he went through back in. He caught a couple fish. And I'm like, dude, it's something, man. It's so funny. You know, it had been around for a while. And I was introducing people to it on Tidal Water. And um, I I caught a winning fish on it within five, seven minutes with inside of the ramp. That was the capper fish for me and my buddy Scooter Lou. It was my biggest tournament one ever. And it was uh, five, five, five pounds and a couple ounces. And it was on a Ned rig on a tree that everybody had fished right before me. The power of finesse is extraordinary. Anyway, I, I digress. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's cool. it's so cool. If uh, it, we're kind of walking down Amnesia Lane, but if uh, anyone wants <laughs> to, uh, you know, go on the in first. Go on the In Fisherman's uh, Midwest Finesse site with my first and last name. I, I've got, I, I don't know, 40, 50 articles on there. It's, it, I mean, I I did it for years, I can, and I was targeting big small mouth, you know, big small mouth with the, the 32nd ounce golfer. And um, I just I moved on to a better mouse trap for my big fish. Right on. I, I think that's one of the best forums out there. Personally, I've learned a lot. It. I caught my biggest Potomac River fish on a black uh, hair jig with pork. And the inspiration for that jig, which I tied a glass rattle on the hook shank with sh heat shrink tube. I put a worm rattle in it. And that fish didn't fit in the live well straight. We didn't have a scale. It, 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 sh it, it shocked me how big it was. I caught that was probably my biggest bag, uh, and it was 43-degree water. But the concept from that came from Midwest finesse. I've always been a finesse fisherman. I fished a spinner right. rod my entire life growing up. And uh, that created a lot of ideas uh, for – and it's not just about smallmouth. I mean, they fish a lot in the Midwest for largemouth. But that finesse form, the fact that you've got 40 right. or 50 articles, that's pretty crazy. I probably read one of your articles before I met you tonight. So, because I'm a big sure. consumer of that, I can highly recommend it. Right. I, uh, I, I'm i glad that uh, you brought up that heat shrink and the rattle deal because that's I, I do that on my sled. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, it's a brilliant idea. Um, it's I've got, I've got it back here. I could show you the jig. Um, but... Yeah, man, uh, it's a sneaky, like old, sneaky little like thing. Old, uh, it, it, it's uh, like the old brass and glass. Yeah, yeah that's oh Don yeah. Iavino, yeah. man. You you're talking my language now. I, yeah. I we won a tournament yeah. on brass and glass. Yeah. And Travis, I haven't done this because I don't fish with people that slow down enough for me to dead stick. Mm -hmm. But the power of dead sticking is extraordinary. Doodle socking. And what Travis is talking about, Travis Myers is talking about, yeah. is the Don Iavino. If you haven't read his book, what old, what's old is not out of school. I'm sorry. Uh, it probably is more in school than it is out of school because people are power fishing right now, fishing really fast, and they're fishing past fish. There's no question about it. Uh, there's, a, there's a very famous dock system on the upper bay that Travis Manson and I fish. And one, a very, very good upper bay stick had just come through there. Travis Myers, and he caught zero. And a shock boat came in and shocked both sides. And he had fished both sides of this dock system. How many bass, I've told this story before, I'm sure, but how many bass do you think that shock boat shocked up on that dock system? Alex, I'll start with you. How many bass came up 
on that dock system after a big upper base stick that mm. knows how to fish this dock system, that fishes finesse, that will fish painfully slow people that power fish would pull their eyeballs out on his boat. <laughs> how many fish did they shock up? I'm going to say 250. You're you're on track, but that's a little crazy. All right, 25, <laughs> 13 on Jig Squad. Anybody else want to guess out 40. there? 40. Okay, we got 40. Travis Travis Myers, who knows what lives where things live. Um, everybody's low so far. Alex, you're high. I'll give you that. Ooh. Uh, JP Harrell's the you're closest. Sean 100? Lai is over 100. Yeah. 125 largemouth bass came off that dock system that day and it blew his mind. He couldn't get them to bite. And so sometimes they just won't bite, but it, it is a fact of the matter that there's way more bass than, you know, unless you're using live scope, then you can probably see them, but sometimes you can't even under that because there's so much shit under that dock. You wouldn't be able to see them, but crazy, right? True story. True story. Anyway, Very. I love, I love sneaky things like, heat shrink and rattles that you're doing it blows my mind i used to use worm rattles all the time the the biggest thing i could tell you about a rattle for me and i'll just tell one more story and then we'll get back to it they're gin clear lake travis myers um very shallow three foot it gets fished all the time it's right off the road people pound the bass constantly i went there early spring fish were up moving very lethargic i threw a tube uh with a high performance hook in it um I think I had a 16th ounce and I put a worm rattle in it, the smallest size available. And I slathered it with cross sauce and I hid behind trees and bow and arrowed my tube out. And it would take the fish at least three minutes to get to the bait. And my tube was down in turtle grass. And then they would, and I watched all of it. And then they would come over and take them another minute to go nose down another minute to stick their nose in the turtle grass <laughs> Another minute to like maybe suck in the scent. I don't know what was going on. And then they would eat it. I probably spent four or five minutes of fish to get them to recognize that there was something in their environment to find the bait, to nose down, to do whatever they were doing to go, okay, I want to eat it. Unbelievable, man. I would have never fished that slow had I not seen those fish early spring in very cold water. It's a crazy lesson in dead sticky. So wow. we talked about finesse. We talked about different baits, whether it be the Helgramite, the craw. Let's talk about your bait casters because I know you do throw uh, some some moving baits as well. What are some go to baits along that line? Um, I mentioned the three my three spinning rods. I use the same reel on everything. All my spinning reels are the same thing uh, for the familiarity. Uh, so I'm not, you know, a lot of touch. If I'm picking one up, uh, it, you know, I like having the same reel on everything. Uh, um, so I use one reel, uh, spinning reel, uh, one bay cast reel. Um, and it, it, everything's got the same line on it uh, on the spin side. Uh, it just, I don't have to adjust a hook set. I got the familiarity between the reels, you know, so uh, my third one and. Oh, yes. Mr. Manson, I'm going to give you something that you can buy or. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, Nico has got a uh, six inch pintail worm that uh. is lights out on a wacky jig and my friend ryan's making me a specialty jig for this thing that's how high i think of this thing um mm. oh man that oh yeah that's what i'm talking about right now down why don't i have that Maybe I do. Hey, Travis, I don't have any of it. Why are you complaining? <laughs> I'm going to call it no Nico. <laughs> wow. Okay, so the six-inch pintail worm, <laughs> wacky wacky rigging it, or, or with a wacky jig, you called it? Weighted wacky? Yeah. 
Wait, right yeah, my Travis my Scott. friend Ryan's uh, making me a specialty one that I've never even seen made. Hmm. Never, I haven't seen it. Even out of Japan, I, I haven't seen this head. So, um, but he's making me hmm. one specifically for that. Um, that's my third spinning reel, right there. Nah. Now we're talking JDM. Uh, I like it. Not even in Japan, Travis. You hear that? Yeah. So Travis Myers. So when I we love it. So when we get a hold of Ryan and we say we'd like that exact jig made, <laughs> what's he gonna say? Uh you're out of luck. <laughs> uh, they're, they're coming. Okay. Well, when? Like give us a time. Yeah, frame. A, a, actually. Yeah. Um probably a week out. Okay. okay. About a week. Just in time, Travis Manson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Okay. How are you fishing that bait? Slow and slower. <laughs> if you learned anything today, That's if the you theme. think you're fishing yeah. slow, slow down even more. I, I, I want to throw a quick teaser out there. Uh, because it reminded me of something we, I have a couple podcasts coming up in, in the future. I'm not quite sure when, and we talked a lot about reaction baits and specifically, uh, we had some guys that are real successful fishing largemouth and smallmouth with jerk baits during, uh, different times of the year, especially times of the year that, where you may not think about fishing a jerk bait. And let's just say it's dead of summer and they can't stress enough that yes, erratic action but extremely long pauses is the key with that setup. And it made me think a lot of times we think when that water temp gets hot and, you know, a jerk baits, I mean, I throw a jerk bait year round, but it goes back to the same thing. They're like, fish it like you would in 30 degree water, even in the dead of summer at times to trigger strikes. And so I see the theme. I get it. I am a very slow angler and I, I camp out in a lot of areas. You know you me, do. Eric. No, Travis, you're, I, I honestly enjoy the change of pace. It's fun, man. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun. I, I, I like fishing fast, which I have to most of the time, but I also love slowing down, man. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I like it. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's a, uh, that's a six inch, uh, Nico pintail worm, but I took, I took about it inch and a half off the head okay <laughs> that thing will last a week oh, that's absolutely. so crazy yeah. isn't that awesome that is crazy with no with no rings you know uh no forceps uh, get tubing on it and uh, you don't need all that with that <laughs> so the the pintail, so that's not actually on the market yet. That's coming. Hopefully, the uh, the jig will, will work out. It'll be a home run for you, even though you haven't seen it yet. I'm interested in that as well. So I'm going to put that in my notes to definitely follow up with that in the future. Um, let's talk a little bit about the bay casting setup and and what you're throwing on that. The jig. Um. So the the uh, bait caster setups, I uh, it, it's either a crank bait, a jerk bait, or a top water. Oh, throw the jig on a freaking spinner rod. Love it. Oh, braid, straight braid, crank bait. Yeah, Got yeah, it. that medium heavy seven oh, six. Sure. I throw that jig on. Heck yeah. What kind of crank bait do you like yeah. for <laughs> giant river smallies? Because I'm a crank bait nut. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it's true. It's true. It's true. 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 Are you? A I've been on your man? site. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you a balsa man, or, or I mean, there's I'm a lot of great plastic. Yeah. I, I, I'm a repeller guy. 
I, oh, I've wow. thrown Rapala stuff for years, oh, wow. and I just, uh, you know, DT4, DT6, the Brat, uh, you know, n this new one, you know, Ott's Tiny, I think is going to be a killer in cold water. So, yeah, I was not I, impressed. I, I can do everything the, I want with those. Right on. Yeah, legendary baits. Can't argue with that for sure. For sure, there's a there's a modification that my buddy Marty Burns Big M does to a to a DT4. I'd I'd love to see if I could get you one. It's pretty special. You you'd take the DT4 and love it even more. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's next level stuff, you know. Like you modify your jig heads, he modifies crankbaits. It's I think you'd like it because it 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 keeps uh -oh. that out of cover a little bit more. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, touch on a modification to one of my jerk baits. I think you might like it. Okay. Yeah. We Do might tell. be talking the same language. All right. Go ahead. What you got? Can uh, you talk? So Can you do it? So um, I, I've got my, uh, that's my crank selection right there. If I've got off colored water, I, I will throw a crank. Um, my favorite time to do that is when the bluegill are on the beds on the weak side of a river. And typically nice. that uh, I'm looking at like I'm looking after, you know, all the smallmouth are off the beds, uh, bluegill get on the beds and weak side of a river to three feet or less. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's when I'm cranking the shells and giving them that bluegill look on, uh, on a weak side. So nice. if Good they're stuff. on the bluegill beds, uh, I got a crankbait in my hand. So heck yeah. Let's talk about that jerk, jerk bait, bait modification. Uh, 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 so that's the bluegill spawn, and if I got cloudy water, I got a crank tied on. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a great deal of the year, my water is just brutally clear and uh, requires quite a bit of stealth. Um I kind of got on this jerk bait deal back in uh, I don't know 09 or ten, where Joe Baylog did a uh, he did a an article on Ian Fisherman about snapping a tube, and in that article he was basically saying you know if you kind of put your finesse stuff away, I'm going to show you like where smallmouth are located because they're going to show themselves on a jerk bait or a you know, big spinner bait or something like that. And um, in Fisherman actually republished that in 2018. It's an awesome article. Mm. And it meant so much to me that I, I, I fish a jerk bait. Um, whether or not I catch a fish on a jerk bait, they're going to, they're going to show themselves on jerk bait. Hmm. I had a unique experience with a jerk bait in Western Maryland. I threw it straight braid because I read an in fisherman article that said if you if you fish it on straight braid, the responsiveness of the jerk bait and how hard it, you can snap it, those bigger smallmouth showed themselves on this bank. I didn't catch one on a jerk bait, but they were there. Now I didn't know how to catch those smallmouth because I wasn't a really good smallmouth angler back in the day. But I was amazed at what lived on that bank. It was a steep sheer wall, mm -hmm. and they were there. And they, I had two and three big smallmouth swirl around thing. And I mean, the harder I snapped it, the more excited they got. They never bit it, but they they appeared out of nowhere, and it blew my mind. I mean, no pan optics back then. I really don't fish with it now. But anyway, it was fascinating to see. But it had to be straight break. And the harder mm -hmm. I snapped it, the more crazy they got, and the more came out. It was nuts. No, I always have a jerk bait rod with straight braid for sure. For that reason, a lot of times in the summer months is when I'll use that technique. Okay, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Interesting. The uh, you know, in the it, the river smallmouth community, uh, jerk baits are a early or late deal. I, I mean, that, that's pretty much the you know the prescription on jerk baits for river smallmouth. It's either really early, like right now. And I mean, right now, um, now I'll leave that 
there, but uh, and or really late. Uh, that, that's typically what river smallmouth guys are doing. Um, I the I I know some pretty good sticks that I mean they don't go fishing without a, a jerk bait tied on for you know bigger river smallmouth and uh, they're absolutely right. Um, and again, I, if I, I get one to commit, fantastic. If I see one, even better. I, I've got them located. So for me, it's a low, uh, you know, locate and fish deal. Um, and again, I'm a I'm a repel a guy on the jerk bait thing. Um, but there is something I do. But I I I, I would probably bet. I, I may be one of the only ones that does it. <laughs> nice. I love it, man. This guy's I, a bait hack, man. I, I think That's what I'm talking about, Travis. Bear with him. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> We're ready. We're listening. I love it. Is he going to say it? I don't know, man. He's he can't us. tease us this, this much. This oh, yes, enough. he can. <laughs> don't do it, Travis. Don't do it, Travis. <laughs> um. Or- I grew up fishing original rappel of minnows like like a lot of guys did. Me too. For everything it swam. I mean, in upstate New York, it was, you know, big brown trout, brook trout, to, you know, you name it. There was an original rappel that, you know, you could probably catch something on. Um, I've got a really long history on that feeder, the Susquehanna that I grew up on. Uh, fishing for some very large river walleye. And back before jerk baits were suspending, and you know, there may have been some guys fishing a rebel spoonbill down in the Ozarks with lead on their hooks and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. What I was doing for river, you know, these 10 pound plus river walleye was drilling an original rappel to suspend. Heck yeah. Like Fritz was doing with his crankbaits back in the day. And I still do it. Uh, number yeah. 11 rappel, a hand drill. Oh, snap. That makes sense. <laughs> That's a big bait. It is. Yeah, I love it. The three hook model. Reminds me wow. of the pros. Like you see yeah. them cranking uh, a 6XD, but what you don't know is that there's like uh Holes drilled in it so it sinks. <laughs> it takes on water. It's a sinking crankbait. Right. They don't care that or, they're going to lose about a, a dozen of them. So your six XD is not getting deep as theirs because they're fishing a completely different. It's all that sneaky stuff, man. Wow, I love it. Right. It, it's uh, I started doing that. I think uh, I, I'm an awful lot of lawns and shoveled <laughs> a lot of snow when I was a kid to. Uh, to experiment uh, uh, on those original Rapala's hand drilling them, but um, I freaking love I, it. I, I got good quick because I didn't want to ruin them, so you know I I got yeah. real good at that pretty quick. So um, wow. I my dad had this old hand drill in the garage, and um, I I went to town with that thing. It just made sense and. That's so cool. And, um, were you shoving like split it. shot in there? I, I, How were you doing? Were you shoving yeah. split shot in there when you were a kid? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, I don't know if you had so, access yeah. to melting lead. Are you still, so is that yeah. size 11 yeah. Rapala still something you use today or are you running different yeah, style jerk bait? Yeah. I'll use that till I, I'll use that till I crow. Yeah. I love it. That's so, so where old about it hurts. is it just, is it one <laughs> drill hole and then you're filling it or are you doing multiple ones? Are you drilling from the top, the bottom, Two. near the front hook? Okay. I, I, there's two holes on the belly right right in line with the trebles between the uh, first and second treble. Okay. You going to try it, Travis? Yeah. You going to get out your well, hand drill? I've never talked and, about and what that. Are you? I've, <laughs> I've never talked about that to a single person in my life. That's so incredible. Wow. And I, I, I believe that there's something about wood and water and TK Stanley yeah. kind of, kind of made it, when he talked about, it, he's a, he's a, he's a bait painter. Um, and one of the best in the nation and, you yeah. know, big M Marty Burns, custom crankbait yeah. maker. It's just balsa has just this, 
I don't know. I think about a fish and they're solid. They're not hollow like plastic. And it's a silent bait. Um, you know, of course, it's making noise with the treble hooks and stuff. But still, that's that, that it's got to be doing something different, meaning that the resonance that it throws off the vibration that the, the fish is picking up with their lateral lines. That's something about wood, man. It's got a special place, I think, in, in, yeah. in bass fishing. Yeah. It really does. Totally Not say you can't catch them. And, uh, I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, as That's you well not, know, and uh, every wood bait that you pick up, you can pick up five of the same thing, and it, you know one of them's going to be, for whatever reason, a better fish catcher. That's true, man. Yeah, you know, that, very I, true. So, are you are, so you trying to make that? Rapala actually uh suspend then or slow sink? What are you trying to accomplish? Suspend. Okay. Yep. I, I can drill those in to... such a way where I can drill those in such a way, uh Travis, where they're suspending about two foot under the surface. And I've got other ones that can suspend about four to five foot deep. Um, the, the ones that suspend about two foot under the surface, I, I don't know if there's a suspending jerk bait out there that touches it. <laughs> I, I just, I, I, I mean, I, I just, I've never seen it. Whoa. I've been, you Whoa. know, I, I've fished, Travis. Min I've fished minnow, ba- I've fished minnow bait. My minnow bait history starts back with like, uh, heating a syringe to put water in a uh, cotton cordell red fin. Now we're talking. See, you that's know, awesome, it, man. <laughs> it, 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 what oh are you using God. then to that's, seal that? You know, what are you using this? What are you using to seal the hole then? Brain power. Wood epoxy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. What a pocket. Maybe a lot of yeah. people drilling away tomorrow. And what would be that. your favorite? Like, <laughs> are you using like the standard Rapala colors? Are you using like the silver and black? Or is there a particular color you you like? Uh, <laughs> gin clear water. Yeah. Silver black back. Okay. And gin clear water, silver black back. Wow. Does does it get more natural than a foiled bait? I'm a big foil fan too, man. Hmm. Yeah, Beautiful like going fan. back to the old Bagley days, and yeah, Dude. like the, you know the old Bango lures and the Bagleys, and yeah. And how I are had... you? How are you working that? I'm just picturing with it being suspended, and everything's lining up, everything's working great. Are you just, are you just pulling that jerk bait, or are you ripping it? Uh, rip and painfully pause. Gotcha. What am I missing, Eric? Nothing. Slow. When you think you're fishing slower, slow, slow down even more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will fish. Uh, now that's the number eleven. That's the first model. Uh, you know, yep. in, the, in the size line um, okay. that has the th- the three three trebles on it. Uh, if you go down one from that, of course, that's the number nine, and that's the two trebles. <laughs> Yep. In the fall of the year, I'll go up to mm. a 13. The Husky 13. Just the a regular floating. The original minnow. Yeah, original floating 13. Those ones we were throwing with Kent for them salmon. <laughs> That's a big wow. ass jerk bait, bro. <laughs> Hey man, um, there, there's a there's a va- there's a there's a there's a old rogue Smithwick. And I think Hank Cherry showed it back in the day. And it was bigger than any rogue I'd ever seen. And he would never talk about what model it was, where he found it. He just, there was a picture of it. Anyway, I got a couple hanging up somewhere. Anyway, yeah. Somewhere in there. I but it's, uh, it's a bigger bait. No, it's right there. <laughs> I've got... Changing? Um, I, I, I've got so many years of seeing in the heat of the summer uh, five pound plus smallmouth on these rivers 
just chasing a six or seven inch shiner out of a root wad or a, a stump or Hell yeah, you know whatever. I, I, I mean, they're not even. They're not, they have. No negative cues whatsoever about chasing a six, seven inch long skinny profile. I mean, they, they just don't. There's um, nothing. There's nothing better. I mean, think about the big bass baits in Florida. What are they? What are they using? Ten inch shiners or whatever. However big. I mean, oh, yeah. right? Is there any better bait than a shiner? So Travis Myers, for me, there was a lake in front of my community, and I caught my biggest bass on the Rapala 11 every year, every year. I throw that thing faithfully yeah. because there were shiners in that lake, golden shiners. So either gold, black back or silver, depending upon the yeah. day they preferred one over the other. And what I noticed was, and then when I stepped down to the nine and some farm ponds around here, I had to get the cadence right. So, you know, we talk about depth, speed, and then cadence it is such an important factor. Do they want it? you know, was it like a, pop pop like really slow i even found that with my walking baits at my western maryland smallmouth lake some days they wanted that thing really aggressively walked and some days you couldn't walk it slow enough like this choom choom and it would just be lazy walks and then long pauses with the walking bait and literally go to move it they were sitting under the bait i couldn't see them sitting under the bait but as soon as i went to move it the instant that that bait moved a micron of an inch it was like pow and you had to dead stick it. So slow walk, dead stick. And the dead stick could be long. It was on a grass line. And these were big smallmouth for my lake. Not the little 10, 12 inches that they're there by the thousands, right. but the three to four pound smallmouth. I had a day. It was on a little Yozuri walking bait in the fall, I would think small. But um, incredible, man. So very fascinating, man. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating discussion, man. You're such a bait hacker. I love it. Who knew? <laughs> I thought we were going to talk just about scent, but you're right there, man. You're, you're, oh, you're man. speaking my lanes. Nah. Somebody asked about the about the thin fin. That's a TK paint job thin on fin. the old the yeah, old thin storm fin. thin fin. I used to catch a lot of bass on a thin fin. It's uh, one of the most unique lures ever made. Cast like a potato chip, but damn, the bass ate it back in the day for me, and uh, they probably still would. We we stopped throwing things that worked in the old days to go to new stuff and. Yeah. Those lures of old are probably some of the best ever made. They had some really special properties, man. But uh wow, very cool. And I mean, like you just said, Eric, you think they would be working better than ever now because everyone stopped throwing them. Everyone's on the new and greatest stuff, but you know, the old school stuff, it's it's still just as good as it was, and no one's thrown it. You guys know I'm a fan of butyrate plastic and it's soft like wood, um, but not quite as good as wood. But, you know, the cheaper hollow plastic, there's just this artificial feel to it. I think a bass can set, not that to say that the cheap plastic baits don't catch them, yeah. but, you know, in pressured situations, there's just something about wood that's magic. And uh, it confirms it for me when somebody who is uh, as deep into river smallmouth fishing as you are, I didn't hear a plastic bait in your lineup. It's the Rapalas <laughs> made out of balsa. And it's yeah. all the Rapala iconic yeah. baits, DT4, DT6. Are you kidding me? Um, the DT8 is out. It's an interesting yeah. bait. Uh, saw it this weekend. Pretty damn snaggy, in my opinion. Don't know why, but, um, you know, thin, thin, wider lip than the six, but didn't come through cover yeah. great. But uh, I'm sure it's going to catch them. So. For sure. Yep. yep. Where are you at, Travis? Hey. What where'd, yeah, where'd you go get there? Where'd you go, Holmes? You got some... There it is, man. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Was that from our little uh, store purchase? <laughs> we were up yeah. in New York, and we stopped in this old tackle oh. shop, Travis, and they had a bunch of old Finland, Finland Rapalas, man, like old, old ones. Yeah. 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 There we go. We got, like a, yeah. we, we got a project right. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I was I wanna freaking out. I, I want to call Travis, I, Travis before you drill into those, bro. I just destroyed the uh downstairs room looking for these so uh <laughs> number so, 13 it looks like so if you yeah. were to drill yeah. just, if you were right gonna... before the front hook <laughs> in this zone maybe mm -hmm. and then in this zone maybe <laughs> 
that that tutoring session will cost you two fifty. Yep. <laughs> right. You could go on the Travis you Myers could, you, one on you, one. You could go into Travis's Travis Myers one on one session. What do you charge, Travis? <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it two hundred? I just love me. I, I, I just love being back on here, guys. So uh, I'll, <laughs> I, I work. Fair, yeah. fair is fair, man. I mean, yeah. he's given a free episode tonight and a free free hour session with you. I think man. you gotta you gotta flip him some dough, dude. Right, Pay for right. an hour of his time. I think it's a fair trade. What's your Venmo? <laughs> Travis Myers, I'm your agent now. Nothing comes free, Travis, in the world. You ain't cheap. And he ain't cheap. You got your two freebies tonight, bro. Well, oh, man. <laughs> well, judging off of uh, that first interview Travis and I did, he can attest to uh, how savvy I am on the technology scale here. I, I'm just lucky to be on here tonight. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Cash or check. <laughs> That'll work just fine. Anyways, listen, I know we got a lot more to cover. I, I want to talk uh, – <sighs> we we got to talk scent because that was one thing that really blew my mind. So let's kind of, let's kind of uh, change the subject. Let's talk a little bit more about scent. Uh, you know, really where this whole, gosh, it's like a pretty in-depth, uh, just walk me through your setup and then we'll let the viewers kind of be like blown you away if they haven't. The, the scent setup, how he soaks. Yes. Yes. Why the reasons when you started, like, Take me back on the history of it and where we're at today when it comes to scent. Well, yeah, Mr. Eric and I were talking about that while you were rooting around for the repels. Right. <laughs> so that's it? That's it. You'll have to watch the replay. <laughs> um, well, we went in that, uh, that first time uh, – you know, Travis, you and I went into it where I talked pretty extensively about taking all those old Ned Rig baits before the Ned Rig was popular and like, you know, 08, 09, all this stuff and, the, and uh, getting the salt out of them, uh, putting them in lukewarm water for a month. Hmm. And changing the water after work every night. And, uh, it, you know, I wouldn't be satisfied until those baits were floating. So that told me all the salt was out of them. I, they were good to go. They were ready to fish. I would let them dry. I used to have them on saw horses. Out, you, you know, in the garage, it would be on saw horses. They would dry. I would put them back in the original bag, send them up. And... Uh, you know, in spring, they were ready to roll. Um, I don't think probably as much about what I do with the sense, just primarily, guys, because I, I, I've been doing it for years. And uh, so, I mean, if you've got specific questions, I'd be, you know, glad to delve deep into it if, you know, if you want. Yeah, I, I... I mean, where do we start? I, I want to kind of go back because remember, a lot of these viewers, they may not have seen the podcast. And so talk sure. to me a little bit about your setup today. And I know it depends on the type of plastic and, and what you're trying to accomplish. But if you could just give us kind of a, a quick rundown, and then I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll hit you with some hard questions. Okay. I, uh, I, well, obviously I, I'm a, big fan of the Nico stuff. Um, and quite honestly, uh, I used that stuff for about, I don't know, a year and a half or something like that before I even knew who Scott Barrett was. And the, be the best scent that I found for the Nico stuff was, you know, that water soluble, you know, pick your flavor. Uh, and I'll give them a plug here, but I have no ties to them. And that's pro care. Uh, if somebody gets on the in fisherman website, uh, back in 20, I think 2016, 2017, uh, Ned Katie and I did a really extensively long, uh, article, uh, on my, my scent system and it's still on there. Um, cool. and it's a long article. <clears throat> 
Um, and that's on the Midwest Finesse Forum? It, it's on the uh, In Fisherman Midwest Finesse okay. site. It's where Ned and I yeah. used to have a bunch of articles. They're still on yeah. there. They're, they're still, oh, yeah. They're still available. Yeah. Yeah, you can Google it, guys. Um, um, I go there all the time. It's I'll find a link best, here real quick. And... One of the best forums ever, there. man. Yeah. They're great. They're great articles. A lot of are information. Incredible. incredible. The best I've ever yeah. seen. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah. Yeah, Ned's re From just real so fishermen. talented with, with his writing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Best I've ever seen. Um, Bar none. I, I'm the water. Yeah. Um, on the water, I use uh, Procure gel, but it's not after my baits aren't uh, being, you know, soaked for a couple months in the in the water soluble. So you're soaking, but but like Nico and Z Man and some of that plastic, are you still soaking in water soluble scent? I don't own any Z-Man anymore. So all my all my plastics go into the water soluble. Yeah. Okay. Water soluble shrimp. Yes. I picked a bunch up from that last uh, the last podcast. As you can see, my box is full, and uh, I've been experimenting with different different scents and styles. Um. When you're talking the water soluble, is that similar to what you're looking at? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that's the fish oil shrimp. Yeah. And I've been I've been playing around a lot with this. I know Eric and I have been experimenting. We you seen that little bag of of baits <laughs> that I soaked uh with the super gel. Um it was awesome. There's a couple couple interesting facts when it comes to, you know, you really turned me on to Procure. I reached out to the company. I actually talked to them today because they had, they reached out to me after that podcast and uh, they wanted to give out a code if anyone was interested in buying some of their scent. Um, I had it written down here. Let me on find that. Yeah, it's Procure is the website. If you guys use Crush 20 c-r-u-s-h 20 they're going to give you 20 percent off your order uh which i thought was pretty cool so um alex if you can put that up um i really here's a fun fact i talked to him for quite a while because i was really digging their goby gel their super gel because i fish a lot of great lakes i and i don't want to say this right now because it's probably going to sell out they are not going to be able to make any more of this goby in fact, Why? nobody in the country legally can make this goby. They got it through yeah. a uh, a research facility, I think, in Canada that that was able to get them a, a whole big batch of gobies, and they made this scent, and that's what I've been using. And what they have right now is all they can have. That's all they can make. So if you do fish the Great Lakes, I certainly suggest to grab some of this. Um, I feel How much like you I, got, Travis? How many you got? <laughs> I have a few. A couple gallons. I have a few, but um, <laughs> it's they're not going to be able to do it. And they're trying to I figure out a way to work with the government to do that. But the government's not playing nice. Like they don't, yeah. they're not going to get any, nobody can legally make it's weird. It's, it, it's, a, it's an invasive species. And they I won't let them take gobies, but I guess harvesting the small mouse invasive species forage is not good for the environment. But and they're know. there by the trillions. We tried. We we brainstormed. Um, but I've been I've been taking some of your advice, Travis, and I have my shrimp, and I've been curing these. No kitties allow my goby baits. I've been soaking them for months. Now, we also talked about adding eyes to some of your soft plastic. I don't know if you yeah. want to share that. How, how, uh, many times yeah. did you, how, many time, how many times did you glue your fingers together? Oh, gosh. So when you want to put eyes on, on plastic, <laughs> oh, make God. sure you have a lot of time on your hands and you, you got nothing going on and you're not preoccupied. 
And here's oh the coolest part. When when I glued these eyes on and then soaked it, these eyeballs are still staying on there, even soaking it in the scent. Yeah. Like they're not falling off. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. But these are all oh, don't stay on there. These, I shouldn't even be showing these colors. Um so well, anyways, these are my tar- stay on there. Yeah. That's my tournament go to uh deal with eyes and and they're soaked. And that's what I use when I think I think it matters. You know, I've confidence i really i can't tell you i think i think when we when we had you on the podcast just that information about soaking your baits and scent for months and then taking the time to put 3d eyes on your soft plastics with super glue that kind of that stuck out in my head man i did it on jig heads like plain jig heads i put eyeballs on the top and when I, you know, dead sticked in the winter in the Northeast, it seemed to maybe make an improvement, but it was hard to get them on, man. And hey, yeah, hey, they stick to your hey fingers. Guys, I, it's a pain. Listen, I, I know you like the, uh, the water soluble, but the gel. So like this Gobi bait, like if I take a, a, a Ned rig or whatever the case may be, like I could take a, a Z-Man here, finesse TRD and guys saying they're, they, I just saw a comment there. They thought they're wasting their time doing that. I'll soak this and it'll stay. It'll be perfect for months for me. Like I'll soak a bunch of these and I've been preparing that for this coming season. And that's what, when Eric, when you stole that bag from me, I mean, those were soaked for quite a while. Well, you know, you're up there looking at the pan optics, telling me you don't see anything. So I figured I'd had to level the playing field with some Travis Myers scented uh, Ned rigs and it worked out very nicely. I also do like, (laughs) I do like the crayfish gel. Okay. So I do apply that a lot. Now I do a lot. I do a technique out there, uh, Domiki rigging or hanging a minnow quite a bit, and that's where we're throwing flukes or finesse baits. And we're going to talk a lot about uh, mm-hmm. a specific bait that I'm in love with on Wednesday's live show. Mm-hmm. But a scent that I would use would be like Alewife or Smelt for that. So there's different these. And the, the coolest thing when I was talking about them, like they like procure like if it's smelt that's what it's made out of they're not making up something mm. that, as a marketing thing like it's yeah. true it's true bait fish just like the gobies they're like i'm like well can't we like blend something and make it they're like no if it's not and and they do all this testing and and uh it, it's crazy what goes on there yeah but they also do a spray so suited, they do, uh... like, go ahead who did uh you speak to at procure uh jason Stephen lynch and steve yes yep okay yep yep yeah steve steve lynch is uh the one that made my custom stuff and uh okay great guy are they, uh, are they selling scientist. your custom stuff are they selling your custom stuff travis yes sir or is it oh they do sell it oh sweet yes what's sir. it called what's your custom scent called travis, travis myers, myers custom Get out, man. Travis Myers. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? That's all you guys need is the Travis Myers custom. That's it. Shit. That's all I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're getting a little coin off that deal. Good for you, for man. Sure. That's freaking uh, awesome. Uh, what? I, yeah, I, I uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm dumb. You, got, you guys saw my email. You guys saw my email yesterday, uh, uh, my signature in my email. Yes. I think AI yeah. said something. He saw it. Yeah, Procure is not on there. So I, I you know, uh, but like I told uh, Travis in that first one, I, I had no ties to Procure. Okay. Um, I, I've used it since, uh, I think, 2010. Gotcha. Well, damn, they made you I custom use it. I, I pay, I, you know. I, I I pay for it like anybody else does. I, I believe in it. So hell, well at least you got a crush twenty discount. Well, th- there was someone said that 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 code's well, not that, working. It, it's, that's a great. I I that's the biggest uh, discount I've ever seen on Procure. Yeah, I was excited huh? when they said that, and I was like, "Are you sure? Because people are going to buy yeah. this tonight." And they're damn, like, "Damn, Travis." Yeah, the man's got his own. The man's got his own custom set, and he don't get a, a dime from it. I'm I'm blown away. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> so crush so crush. You might want to try all caps twenty, maybe a capital C, maybe all lower caps. 
So um, there's a thousand variations of Crush 20. Try them all tonight and let us if, know what works. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'm going to make a call. I'll send an email tomorrow um, if you guys can't do it and just follow back up. But I'm hoping but, it's going to work. Let me know if you guys have ordered it. It'll, it'll work. Yeah, and how you capped which part. All caps, a lower yeah, C, an upper C. Like know. I said, there's AI. How many variations could that be tonight? We'll, we've got 212 <laughs> Five, people watching. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That'd be a lot. I'm messing with it right now. I'm not having okay. any luck. So. What do you mean? Right. It's not working? It just says the code does not exist. I'm trying smallmouth crush 20. Just crush. crush. 20. It's going to be crush 20. It might be caps. I don't know. <laughs> In other words, you got to work for your discount tonight, suckers. Um, Alex, do this because maybe the original code was 14 crush 14 CRUSH. Try that. Maybe they didn't change it. 14 crush. Nope. That does not exist either. So. Okay. So crush 20. We'll figure it out. If you guys, uh, I'll try to talk. I'll send an email tomorrow um, and see if we can get to the bottom of that. I do apologize. We'll get it figured out. I disabled the code so I can get all the goby sent. I am going to place an order for that some more gobies for sure. I just thought that was really interesting, and and I was I was like blown away. Like really, we can't you can't get any more gobies sent. What is the do they not do they not want the government? Gobies? It's an invasive not? species, so the government doesn't. You can't commercially fish for them. Like they have no way to get them. I yeah. can't even take a live goby and and put it in the live well or transport it or anything. So, but you have. Well, ah, that's another no, story. Travis would never break the law. Have you, you ever anything. you've eaten a goby live? Yeah, have I you? have. Yeah, that's not yet. Maybe next year. Has anybody tried to cook a goby? You know are what? They, that's a great uh, video. We'll do tasty? that. Catch and cook. I you'll imagine do that. it's, it's I'll something film like uh, it and you'll do it. It's something like smelt. Maybe we just get a bunch and fry them up whole. Go. Yep. Yeah, and I'll it's watch not like it's them. gonna kill you. I'm not interested, but I'd like to see you eat one. I <laughs> mean, I think fillet? you should be what one if we with fillet? the goby. It's like illegal. Really we tiny? can't. We can't do that, Eric. It'd be illegal. You transported a snakehead from Maryland to Pennsylvania and filleted him up. That's before I knew it was illegal. <laughs> anyway. well, this does seem like a good time to remind everyone there are two giveaways going tonight. We have Eric's going to buy a sticker, or something from the Bass Lab. You entered in to win his giveaway. Uh, here's he my giveaway. Down. You guys got Dunk this. Is this is oh, the yeah. this is the deep timber tiger timber and, doodle in skunk? It's a DC one, goes about one foot, and that is a four wheel drive crankbait. Will come through anything and painted by TK Stanley. Anyway, and I'll throw in another Bass Lab special plus a monster bass box that I have here. Bingo. There you go. And Travis's one dollar super chat gets you one dollar. Oh, excuse me, one entry. And I'm sorry, yeah. you gotta buy you gotta buy a sticker off the Bass Lab site. Yeah. To be entered into the drawing so perfect got a there you go forgot that part and guys i will get the code straightened out if you guys um hopefully by tomorrow afternoon you can circle back on this video in the description below i'll have that information for you and alex can you put the bass lab up somebody just asked how you enter there you go that's there how you go. enter my giveaway i don't there do many go. giveaways maybe i should do more but anyway. Travis, this was some great stuff tonight. One, uh, incredible. I mean, great. Jeez. The, the, the one thing that I would add, guys, is, uh, and Travis, I saw you uh, had some in your hand there. Uh, every hard bait that I throw gets that bait wax on it. <laughs> every nice. one of them. Yes. Is it just like a stick of deodorant yeah. that you rub on there, basically? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, Add here's that. the other thing I really like about that. Uh, Eric touched on throwing braid with a jerk bait. And I throw my top waters in in jerk baits with braid, straight braid. I've converted and to throw top water. Yeah. I'll take that, I'll take that bait wax and I'll run that about eight to ten inches up my line. And I've got no issue whatsoever with that that line getting in that front trouble. Hmm. Say that again. So he'll Travis? take this. He'll take this and, and ah. like a wax almost and, and put Makes it on it the stiffer. line. That's fascinating. I use two yeah. bobber stops. I use two bobber, bobber stops. stops that, yeah. yeah, but that that's even more fascinating. I never even thought that waxing it probably makes it float too. Yeah. Like yeah, I, so, I thought yeah, about when I frog and Travis, like I thought about when I was frogging, 
to put fly line floating on my braid to keep that that braid on top so it didn't pull the frog down because you know how the mm -hmm. braid will absorb water over time the, but yeah. i love it this spray idea. as well so this trophy trout i don't know if you're aware of this travis the trophy trout and that road on the bottom because they, they were talking about that that's made from actual chub and so although Mino. trout love yeah. chub but bass certainly do as well so i spray this on i'm going to be spraying this on the chatterbait spit any type of like even a, a you know, that's one thing we didn't talk about, and I'm curious, Travis. Do you throw like rooster tails or inline spinners at all, or have you? Uh, have I? Yeah, yeah, years, and, years and years ago. Um, gr you know, great numbers bait, fantastic okay. numbers bait. Sure. Mm. Um. Uh, uh, you know, it's like one of those, uh, if I'm going to teach somebody how to fish, I, I'm probably, you know, I got a number seven rappel and an uh, inline spinner and probably a three in Senko and we're going to go catch fish. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, inlines, are, you know, just a timeless bait, you know. True, true. So, so uh, Don asked about scent on hair jigs and marabou. I would try that spray. I'm not sure how that would affect the marabou, but a lot of times guys are throwing that little bit of plastic into, you know, putting a little bit of plastic in the marabou to, to add some weight up against the head. And I would imagine if that was so, scented, I think that would accomplish the same thing. The water soluble will not adversely affect a marabou jig. Okay. It will not mat the fibers together. So, so these are literally soaking that guys water in that soluble. shrimp. Go go ahead. That water soluble guys. Uh, you, you could you can pour that, spray that on a fighter fly all day long, and it's not going to mat the fibers. Perfect. So this was soaking since August. Duh, Travis, what are you doing? Put that color I down. Just are to you show the eyeball? Don't don't die, uh, Travis. Ooh, this was soaking late. since August, and uh, it's I can't. Mm. Is it is it in there? It's it's penetrated the hey, plastic. Don't show that. Don't here. make that big, bro. Oh on. man, what are you doing, Manson? <laughs> that the, that's Talk about a secret. That's the secret color. That's just a special color I hold dearly to my. Uh, uh huh. Not available. It's not yeah. available. It's like it's like one it of your will, secret deals, Travis. It will it will never be available. Not available. So that is scent is now in there, Travis. That water soluble has sucked into that plastisol, oh, right? Oh gosh, yes. And it okay. doesn't. It's not deformed. Nothing. It literally has been here since August. And uh, we fished out of a milky bag on Travis's yeah. deck up in Ontario. He had it in a Ziploc, in this bag with like all this milk, it, and it was amazing. The fish just. It's pretty freaking cool. Thank yes. you for a great day, Travis Myers. And Travis Manson <laughs> and and Will at Gajo Bates. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I just like to thank everybody. Quite welcome, guys. Frick, man. Yeah, really great welcome. stuff, man. Quite a help. Nice, nice to meet a bait hacker. That's pretty cool, man. West Virginia. I'll have to look <laughs> you up when I'm up at Deep Creek and uh visiting the relatives in Kaiser. West Virginia. He ain't going to tell you where he lives, man. I'm no, I'm not interested. Well, I'll take him to Deep Creek. Come fish. Uh, let's let's try some of your cool techniques on a really hard to fish body of water and see what happens, man. Let's yeah, take out I'll some. Uh, yeah, man, for sure. I, I love a challenge like that. I mean, personally, I love to fish pressured water because to me, that's the angler. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, trophy hunting, that fish is old. And it doesn't matter if he hasn't been fished for. He didn't get that old by being a sucker for an artificial. So you're a trophy hunter. You're an angler. There's a difference between yeah. people fishing and people that angle. Sure. Uh, somebody said that recently on a podcast or something, and it really caught my attention. There are right. anglers in the world, and then there are fishermen. And we should all aspire to be better anglers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why I like fishing a pressured bank i know it annoys travis to no end he wants to be in new york and not see a soul and there are a lot of people like that and i get that i love going down a bank where four boats have just pounded the shit out of it 
and I'm throwing a bait that I've modified or hacked or done something different or found something, or I've got an action, or I'm imparting and presenting the bait in a way that will trigger a strike. I would love being a bass fisherman in Japan on pressured water. I, that's my jam. I like that. So I, Because that speaks to my soul as an angler. I've done something different than you. I've studied the fish. I've studied the prey, like Travis just said an hour ago. You understand the behavior. You understand the seasonality of it all. And you've done something different, whether it's downsized your line, downsized your bait, upsized your bait, hacked your bait, put nail polish on your bait, weighted your bait, different cadence, secondary action, tertiary action. That's angling hmm. in my book. That's what I'm about. Very so well I'm, said. He is an angler. Travis Myers, you are an angler. And I've loved every minute of it. Thank you for coming on. Yes. Thank you. Good uh, stuff. Now, listen, yeah, I'm my, going to. Uh, my pleasure, sir. I appreciate that. We're going to. Um, well. We got to get a hold of Ryan. North Branch Tackle. I just followed him on, on Instagram. I'm going to uh, be putting the order in. Basically, what I'm going to ask him is uh, I'd like to, you know, set me up just like you do, Travis Myers. Let me know, uh, you know, what what styles, what heads, what, what we are. He should do like a Travis Myers uh, pack, like the Travis Myers ultimate smallmouth pack. That's cool. That's what I want. For Christmas. No, before Christmas. Ah, yeah, and a one-on-one -on -one for $199.95. I'm putting this Nico Craw on that sled, dude. Okay, I know. It's just write the checkout $199.95. You, you know how powerful that was. Yeah, that's all I needed in this whole podcast. Maybe besides the uh drill in the this, hole and the Rapala, but this right there with that sled, I see the value right there with it. So I'm in. I'm in. The sled with the, the right hook. I found if the you sleds guys, years it, ago, painted them with nail polish. I didn't like the hook, and I couldn't find somebody to custom pour me some. And I can't Dang. stress enough, this is the most realistic crayfish imitator plastic on the market. I've said that before. You guys know you can go to my website. You can get codes for Nico Bates. I think it's Smallmouth Crush 10 if you're interested in buying some of these. It is the real deal. I use them on a Ned rig, okay? I fish it like a heavier Ned, and I catch largemouth on the Chesapeake quite a bit with this and it works now given the, the sled, given a little bit different look, definitely interested in that. So I'm going to be giving that a try, but uh, this bait has my approval. I, I got to slow it down a little bit after talking with you, um, but it truly is a special bait. I throw this a lot. Uh, well, even my demonstrations on the fish tank over the last uh, couple months doing the seminars and I would show this in the tank. And it's just unbelievable uh, the amount of fish that grab it that are in that tank as well as just the way it works. And you can see it truly work in the, on the bottom. But you really want to think like a bait fish. You want to – I tell my I, I tell people in the seminars, you want to work this not like you would just randomly work in a bait back. I want you to pretend you're that crayfish down there scooting along the bottom and act like yeah. that crayfish. That's how you work your rod like you were that crayfish living down there. And whether he gets a little nervous, whether he stops, he doesn't know what to do, this plastic's going to float up, his claws are going to be in defense mode. Like, that's what you want to do. You want to mimic that bait fish. So that's my two cents. Yeah, Great I really think on uh, on that sled that uh, that craw is not sitting in a defensive position. And, uh, it, you know, it, I, I really try not to – overthink things in regards to, well, how do we feel and how does a smallmouth feel and all this? But I will say, you know, in nature, if, if you've got something that's alerted or it's on, it's in a defensive posture, am I, am I more likely to tangle with that than something that's unassuming and not overacting mm -hmm. nature? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, you yeah. know, I mean, we can go back, we can go back a long ways with Charlie Brewer talking about overacting and don't overact nature and, you know, that do nothing style. And uh, I, I've been a big proponent of that for a lot of years on my lead and plastic. Mm -hmm. 
So, so just so when I get these out of the package, you suggest I get another container just like this with that shrimp and just start soaking them. Simple as that. With the crawl only. Yeah, with, with the crawl only. Now, that crawl, one of those crawls on a sled, um, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll get... I, I can fish over a month with that, and I, I fish quite a bit. Crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I can easily get a month out of one of those baits. Yeah. No, I agree. The only time I ever I mean, have to replace is if I, I get mean, it they're... if I get it stuck. Yep. Right. Wow. You won't you won't get a hung on that sled. So amazing. Is that a Rude. parrot in the background out here? <laughs> It is. It's Alex's. Yeah. Alex, you have yeah. a parrot? Travis. We both you didn't know this I about do. him. Oh my I god, do. dude. Travis does. So <laughs> I say I say what we do. Uh Travis Myers, you go to bed, leave the cameras rolling. We'll see what the parrot says. <laughs> Maybe he'll give up some of these secrets, you know? <laughs> that's pretty good, Travis Manson. That's a good joke. You made I a mean, great joke, man. He'll tell us <laughs> where to drill those holes. <laughs> I'm just I'm just getting warmed up. Oh. <laughs> ah. Well, you got more? We're we're here. We're here all night. I I don't I I'd like to thank everybody for uh tuning in tonight. Um you know, and taking time out of your lives and tuning in. Uh and I, I'm a big fan of the show. I watch every episode like you, you know, I would assume most everybody else does, and and uh, it's do. a terrific resource. But, oh wow! Yeah, I watch every I, episode. I yeah. didn't know that. What 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 do you what do you like about it? Yeah, I, I'm just glad I'm just glad to see uh, AI made it out of the uh, airport parking lot. <laughs> that was a whole. That hey, was, did you have to call assistance? Like, did you call the guy with a golf cart? I did. Yes, it took hey. me about two hours to find it after I got off the the phone with you guys. <laughs> it was pretty bad. But they got you oh. in the golf cart and rode you around, right? They That's did. Good. There you go, man. They and did. all you had was shorts on? Yep. Because that day in South Carolina, it was like 70. And I figured, yeah, it might be cold, but I'll find my truck real quick and just get in there and heat it up. It won't be that bad. And then two hours later, riding around the parking lot, I was wow. I was struggling. But I made it out. And I learned mm -hmm. the, the lesson the hard way to take several pictures of where you park your car and note which entrance you went into. That was my issue. I didn't know there was two entrances. So we were looking around the one entrance when I was all the way over by the other one. So I got thank it done. God, got thank home God you had that night, fifth, but... fifth of jack in you, man, to keep you warm. <laughs> yeah, that tin cup was holding me over. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have done. Man, Travis, why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why, what are you doing Ooh, to that guy? That's AI. crazy. You hang out with Travis Manson, see what happens to your life. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was a lot of fun, and definitely glad I didn't die out there in the cold and made it home safe. But it was a good trip. Nice meeting everyone, and excited for next year. Should be a good time. Nice, oh, nice. Man. Oh yeah. Yeah, I see a couple of guys saying the Crush 20 still isn't working. We'll work on it tomorrow. Travis will post on his social media about it, maybe even do another video, and then get that code out to everyone because after hearing this tonight, I'm ready to put a couple hundred into some pro here to keep me stocked up for a while. <laughs> nice. I just sent them an email now. Um, I just said, I uh, tried offering the code Crush 20, and the code wasn't working. Can you look into that and advise? So – Guys, let me just um, Good let stuff. me find out what I will do as soon as he gets back to me. Uh, well, he's three hours behind nine thirty thirty seven. Yeah, he's probably out of the yeah. office. But as soon as he gets back to me, and if we can get that code working, just check the link here in this video. In the next day or two, I do apologize for that. But at the same time, you know, even at well, just wait. We'll get you that code. No worries. We'll figure it out. No. And, and now here's the deal. I, yeah, pro I just, just for pro, Travis, just for pro reference here, good like, people, we're gonna we're gonna take care of the viewers. This uh, so this shrimp here, so these bottles are are quite small. How would you recommend? Like, 
Like if, if I soak these, can I take these out and then put new plastics in? Or how would you recommend, you know, prolonging this scent or, or do we just keep buying more bottles? Is that the, is that what we have to do? Okay. Um, just so I understand your question, Travis, you're, you're, trying to prolong the scent so you're talking about taking it, baits out once we feel like they've been soaked long enough or we fished through them can we add more to it like is a full bottle necessary the only thing that you have to do is just make sure your baits are covered okay it, it, you know they don't have to be swimming in it and uh like going going back to that original interview with us Mm -hmm. um you, you know just i touched on keeping that level just above your baits um it, there's no need in uh you know essentially wasting money and having you know too much you, you don't need it okay uh jp's asking um, in should that we... video Shit. if go people ahead. go back on that video and i touched on every couple months i would look in on those baits to see how they're soaking it up. Mm. Uh, but you don't need, you know, two to three inches of scent over top of those baits. It, it's overkill. So it, and mm. it saved quite a bit of money, you know, doing that too. So should, should they be storing? So JP's just asking, um, should we be storing these scents in a refrigerator for long term? Or is it just, is room Good temperature question, man. fine? No, you don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't, don't have, have any room in next next to the bodies you got, Travis. You wouldn't have any extra space. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, everybody. Whatever. Travis doesn't have any bodies that he's drip dried in the freezer. <sighs> nope. But if you do, don't be putting your procure in there if you work for the mob or something. All right. I'd argue that just makes it smell even better. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> So next summer you'll see me uh, in the kitchen uh, boiling some gobies in a big pot, stirring them, <laughs> and then put them in the blender. Right? Oh gosh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, if your wife didn't like the the toenails, I'm sure she'll love the boiled gobies in the middle of the kitchen. <laughs> can you imagine? I can't wait till it's like legal and we can we can uh, possess uh, gobies. You know what I mean? Never happened. Maybe one of these days. Who knows? Well, perfect. Well, we went through a lot of these uh, vampire scent. What else we got? <laughs> Some blood in there. These comments are wonderful. <laughs> good com good comments tonight, guys. Stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we had good pretty good, now. very good crowd. I think we almost hit 300 at one point here. Mm -hmm. uh, getting close to that. Again, we're having our little impromptu live on wednesday uh that's gonna be at 7 p.m you guys want to join in for that i think it's gonna be a nice little show uh something unusual we just don't do but because you guys wanted more of a schedule and a plan i really couldn't fit these guys in until june and the fact that they're releasing a brand new bait on wednesday i wanted to uh to get them on the show and do something a little different so um great lakes finesse will be joining us on wednesday in two days Eric will be there. Alex, perhaps. I'll have to check my schedule. It'll oh, be iffy. I know I got something new ones in, but I'll keep you updated. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, that will be a good show. I'm excited to see what they have coming out and see how your relationship develops with them. I think you guys could do a lot of a lot of fun stuff together. It'll be awesome. I got a big day tomorrow trying to get things, trying to get the garage here ready and organized. I'm going to try to hit the bay uh, this week as well. So, yeah. and then I'm heading to, uh, heading to upstate New York on Friday to hang out with JP for a special, special video that we're going to do. Ooh. Can't announce that just yet, but uh, we're excited for that. And then uh, my guiding pretty much starts full time. Hopefully last week was, or yesterday was the worst, uh, of the weather we're going to experience this late winter, early spring, because man, it got down to 20 degrees last night mm. and now, uh, or two nights ago. And now it's going to be, we got some seventies this week and hopefully we'll have a nice warm up. I know those Chesapeake Bay bass are ready to start chewing Eric. We're going to get out there soon. Let me know if you want to go this week. Yeah, I'll go. Really? 
Yeah, what day? I don't know. Thursday, I was thinking. We'll pick the nicest day. You want to go deal with those? Why not? Let's go catch some fish, man. Finicky largemouth? No, they're sitting in eight to ten foot. Of, you know, I mean, what do I got a fun. rig? Are we are we gonna be blade baiting, silver budding, or are we gonna? If the water temps in the fifties, I'm gonna be cranking. It's got to be in the high forties, I would think. I think it'd be fifty soon. Okay. Well, let's do some cranking. It was, it was fifty-eight in you know North Carolina with that crazy ass cold snap it was 25 degrees on sunday morning when yeah. we went to fishing mm. and it was still 57 56 so yeah. i can't i can't imagine it not hitting 50 i want to crank all right we'll crank not saying they won't even blade babe but why let's crank let's go mm. throw some shad wraps and flat sides man yes i got them tied up and ready to go yeah get a dt8 out there man you know let's i don't even have can... any dt8 yet oh do you? I just, uh, yeah, of course. I, I wanted to try it. I mean, I can't get the discount. I get, I get the discount. From the I'm just curious. I don't know if the bait's going to be any good. Sure, it will. I have no idea. I guarantee it will. I'll... I don't know. I don't know. And if the the fish are up, you know, Travis, you know. I'm like you. I love the DT series. Um, well, I love fat wraps. I love. Uh, I just got a bunch of these on eBay the other day. Um, I really like the old school uh, fat wraps. I love these, the rattle yeah, fat wrap. Wrap. One yeah. of my favorite cold water cranks ever made. Finland, yeah. Yeah, wow. dude. Yep. I, That's a I number fished seven. it with you, Travis. Uh, five. 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 Yep. Five. Five. Yep. Five five's my favorite size. Mm -hmm. I like the rattling one. Yeah, same here. Muddy, that looks like water. the seven to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's five. Yeah. I just, yeah. Uh, I grew up throwing these um like this was the bait yep. of choice for me growing up right there that exact color pattern yeah. everything nice. and uh we just crushed the smallies with it back in the day and so it's kind of a i don't throw them a whole lot but large i realize i eat it on the rivers they? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah dude mm -hmm. kidding me that's my one of my favorite cold water muddy it's such cranks. a tight wobble like it's, it's just, not tight it's, it's not tight. It's more of a lazy. It's crazy. It's not. Yeah, it's not it, a super I call tight it water. tight, but I call it lazy. Okay. Tight is like a flat side. That's a more okay. lazy. It's just that's. I it's mean, a I know the different bait. retrieve that you don't. It's it doesn't look like nothing. It's like a do nothing retrieve. Would you agree it's, with that? It's, it's not lazy. flashy. It's not. It's just it lazy just and works. subtle that that gets bit. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Love it for cold water. Agreed, man. Heck yeah, man. Well, I guess we got to end the show at some point. <laughs> Dang, nice. I'm sure we'll have a lot of comments to go through in the next. Uh, a lot of people, you know, believe it or not, we had almost 300, but a lot we'll have a couple thousand by the end of the week that watch this, and there'll be a lot of comments on there. Um, as far as getting a hold of Ryan. Um, you guys, I guess we got to just do a search. Is, is it fake? He doesn't have a website, right? Travis. Uh, he's got, he's on Facebook. You can get a hold of Facebook. Honor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hella bass is we haven't had an awkward section, uh, an awkward part in the show yet. So we can't end. I'd say, well, Hella, yeah, you, ha you haven't you watched mean? the whole show. Why are you trying to stir up trouble, Hella? Yeah. Why don't you go? Why don't you go do a live right now? Come on, man. Why are you stirring the pot, Hella? Travis, what do you think of our epic <laughs> endings? Have you ever seen any of our epic endings in the past? If he am, watches am, every am show, I, of course am he I has. Too aggressive. Let's evaluate me. What do you think? What's the, what's the deal here? Does does Eric kind of get get under my skin, or am I going too hard on him? What what are your thoughts? Uh, quite honestly, well, from a viewer standpoint. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I think you guys have an amazing thing going, and I would probably leave uh, my personal views out of the podcast. Okay. Thank you, Travis, because that that that's the awkward spot that you were looking for. Hella bass, Travis Manson asking a guest to evaluate the the host and the co-host, and uh, tell us what he actually thinks. I uh, hey, I like it. 
I like I, I think Travis, that tells you everything I you need like to know. You don't do it on air. You do it after the show. If you want I somebody's like constructive opinion. criticism. Actually, you don't, because if you cared, you'd ask questions about that when you're off air. You're oh. only sh- you're only trying to show like you care because you're on air. No, oh, geez. You could care don't less. Go you, there. Dude, I've worked with you for how many <sighs> years? You've never asked me. What can I do different, Eric? What can I how can I improve? How can I not get under your skin so much? Is it me? Is it you? We've never had that conversation. It's like listen to this podcast. I don't know. Hey, along it's similar lines, steps. guys. Uh, along very similar lines from what you're talking here. Um, someone mentioned earlier at what water temp would I start throwing at Nico Craw? Oh, good question. 55 degrees. Oh. Okay. Okay. 55 like degrees it. in every river that I hit. That's when those first craws become uh, active and they're out and around. Makes sense. One thing I wanted to ask you before we let you go, Study as far as mouth, color choices, is hmm. there a particular color you really like to throw or do you experiment a little bit? I experiment with Eclipse and mud bog. That's all I need. Okay. Eclipse so I really have, live it up. Eclipse, two Eclipse is Eclipse is going to give that little. Uh, I guess the claws have that little color to them. Yeah. Is that what you're talking? Yeah, yep. I agree. Yep. Yeah, that's one thing. That's yep. one thing Eric and I definitely agree on, especially for tidal water fish. Well, anywhere in the country, we like dipping and dying. And one thing for sure, yep. these don't take dye that well, and they can, but I think having that that color already built in on the claws just just helps a little bit i mean i've tried different yeah. ways to do it and conventional plastics well, not uh, a problem well there's some stuff you can do to nico that'll be in the 199 session travis mm-hmm. so like go what ahead. give give us a hit <laughs> what travis, are you talking about tra- don't do it travis get that 199 come man. on he's dying. man he's not <laughs> travis <laughs> Maybe for, Reco- uh, recognize the man's value. Pay Travis Myers, <laughs> do your own VIP with just Travis. It's $199. Only tonight, if you sign up Travis Manson, you'll get it for $199. Down from the $299 price that Travis Myers and I discussed Jeez. earlier. That's a deal. I think it's yeah, a deal. heck, guys, I'm lucky to be able to log in here and do this. <laughs> I mean, you could cash a check, can't you? Travis Matt still has a check, oh, as far as I remember. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right, yeah. Check, Just show a little love, Travis. School. What I in the heck? Check. Cash a check, um, Travis. Send you, the check. You can we'll get your the, address later. You can color the Nico stuff. Okay, with what? That'll come in the session. I come on, Eric. Times do I have Shut to your mouth. <laughs> I want him to keep something, man. Good night. I you don't like want it. to know? I just like that he's got something that he's not going to give He's got plenty he didn't tell us. Don't let him fool you. Okay. He's not <laughs> fooling me. I, he's an old sage, man. Are you kidding me? He knew what not to say and say tonight. I love it. <laughs> Travis, I, I'll, uh... it, sounds like, it sounds like you need an agent. I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit we gotta pick well, a winner we do yeah eric are you picking yours tonight or are you doing that at a no uh, i'm gonna later? wait for the broadcast to like people watch that couldn't watch tonight if right. they want to buy some stickers right. so i'll i'll pick mine later in the week so we had a bunch of people on the uh but uh, because you're chat. taking donations on the super chat you guys can pick yeah, yours yeah. tonight All right, let's go Makes with it sense. who we got Makes sense. All right. So I just put in a couple minutes ago. I want to thank everyone for entering. We had a lot of entries tonight, a lot of new people. So we appreciate that. But the winner of the giveaway tonight of Travis's Monster Bass, Monster Bass t shirt, baits, the G Crack, all that good stuff goes to Jake Harshman. Jake, congratulations. Jake. Reach How about out that? To Travis or I, and we'll get that sent out to all you. All right. Very cool. How about that? There you go. He's got a tournament coming up April 7th. He's been texting me as we've been talking on there you go. Instagram. I did coach him to his first kayak win on the Potomac. Uh, I think I Jake will say that he did. All right. I was proud of that, man. Well, Ross, I didn't even charge for it, Travis. Send me your uh s- what's your pro- send just, me your address, please. Just having fun, dude. Reach Come out on. through Instagram, gotta, give me your address. Go. We'll get that out to you. 
go with it, Travis. Go with it. This is part of what <laughs> people like is the yin, the yang. Yes. The jabs, the the punchbacks, the you know what I mean. I need the another crazy. black cherry seltzer. That's what I need. Yeah. So you you, you got off the wagon at the classic. Did I had a few notice? drinks at the classic. You had a lot of drinks at the classic. Be honest, really? Be Were you there? No, I didn't. You told me you did. Oh gosh. Eric, I heard from several people that that was the most behaved they had seen Travis in years. Thank they you. They were impressed. Well, yes. very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. How, did you really not sleep? Because um, you were deathly afraid of not waking up to go to the Mercury booth? That was one of them, yeah. That's amazing. How did you feel afterwards after drinking and not drinking for so long? Have you noticed any brain um, I, I left. I left the problems. Ike live party at, what, 11? To go fish the next morning. That's how good I was. Yeah, I drove. I drove five hours uh, to go jack on some bedding bass. So it was fun. Caught my personal best on the drop shot. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, There was, there was, uh, I just started looking at these comments, guys. There there was one gentleman (laughs) over here that said, I just started looking here. Uh, there was one gentleman over here that said that uh, uh, unless I was, if you don't give up some juice, you shouldn't be a guest on this show. I would like to think tonight I gave up some juice. <laughs> you oh, you did. gave up a lot um, of juice, man. You they were very, joking. Very, listen, very listen, generous. you can't take t- can't no. take those comments to heart. Now, well, and here's where I'm going with that. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, I've got some colors I'm working on with Nico, and I, I'm not – that's why I didn't go there with a the paint deal. Sure. I get it. I, I have a feeling we're going to have some really cool products coming out with Nico in the future. And, uh, damn, I'm excited. Like I said, I really – I got turned on – you know, when I was doing the shows last year – and Scott was there uh, presenting Nico Bates and, and looking at them. They just, they were so intriguing. And then when we had them on the live show, uh, I guess last year, it really, when he goes through the, because ba- Scott's so good at talking about all the different applications and the reasons why and how the baits made. And, and, and it really, it was to the point where I was like, this stuff is amazing. This information he's given out. People were begging me to take this down off the live and not keeping up on the cha- on the channel uh, because it was just mind blowing. You could tell people gravitated towards those baits and I've been a huge fan ever since we um, Eric and I make a couple videos every, every once in a while, especially up by wills last fall uh, on the Nico Ned that we had some success with. And so uh, by far, we're definitely sold on it. We actually, we use their, even their, their worm. I forgot what it's called where you actually can put that uh, rattle in it. Remember we made Zaza, that video? I have not released that yet, Eric. I, the I Zaza. Looked, the, the Zaza. Zaza. It's still, um, I guess we'll have to wait a year. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Yep. But I made a couple videos. The thing is, a lot of it is timing. Like, there's videos. In, I think we were in May when we did that video. And by the time I got around to it, it was like September, October. And it just didn't make sense timing-wise. But if you guys know this on the channel, I do tend to put some things out every once in a while that might be a year or two old, but we're just getting around to now. Uh, I will tell you this. I do have some, some really cool videos coming up. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about finesse fishing um, for largemouth down South. There's a video I put together. We're going to talk a little bit more about swim baits for smallmouth, And then we do have a video of, of the new Camus as well. That walkthrough. Those are the, the main videos I'm working with. Actually, Eric, I made a pretty cool video uh, with the owner of the uh, the hog trough down at the classic, kind of a way to uh, express my, uh, you know, I guess the fact that I messed up and I wanted to make it right with him, and kind of talk about his business and the fish tank and and everything he's got going. That came out to be about a about a fifteen to twenty minute video, and is really impressive all the stuff they have going on uh, uh, with on on the business side of that. So I'm actually going to probably release that here in the next couple of days. Uh, so job. hopefully that'll be a pretty cool, yeah. pretty way cool to make video it, as well. Way to make it right, man. Oh, he's a cool dude. We talked for like, honestly, that Thursday afternoon, I, I wanted to approach him to, to talk about doing this video. 
dude, we talked for like three hours and nice. he gave up some amazing stuff. Uh, frog fishing. Yeah. Smallmouth fishing. Like nice. I should have been taking notes. I, I remember a lot of the conversation, but damn, that dude knows some stuff when it comes to fishing. So very cool. Yeah, it worked out. I think he's a, uh, he's a good, he's a good dude. I'm, 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 I'm sad. We had to get to know each other that way. But at the same time, I'm I'm thankful for it. So, well, good there you stuff. go, man. That's Absolutely, good. Awesome. that's good. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Apologized and you showed remorse and you offered an olive branch. Good job. There that's you the go. To, that's the way to put it on there. Nice. I'm learning. I'm learning. That's right. Well, Travis, thanks for joining us, man. We'll let you go. Absolutely, Travis. Thanks. Thank you. That was awesome. That Give was. Travis Myers a hand, everybody. Really a pleasure. That was fantastic. Thank you for having me, guys. And uh, you, you guys get really, really bored next winter or something. Hit me up. I'd be glad to come oh, back. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, no question. <laughs> You're always welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> I good. appreciate it, guys. I uh, had a great time. And uh, thanks you for everybody it. for tuning in. Awesome. You got it, man. Thank you again. And as always, guys, until thanks. next time, we'll see you on the water. That's how you end the show. Boom! Politely, formally. <laughs>